No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and I'm in here today. I got my boy Remo co-hosting, and we're very, very lucky, very excited to be having a conversation with somebody who's been making serious waves out of Chicago, really delivering uh, the news and an up-close personal perspective on what's going on in the culture and everything. We got Trenches News masked up in the building. How you feeling, bro? Yo, <laughs> Trenches News on No Jumper. That's crazy. You you hyped that you finally made it because I know you ain't even been doing YouTube that that long, only like a year or two, huh? Yep, yep. I'm excited, man. You know to watch y'all, watch watch you on other too. You know what I'm talking about like, Porn. man. I'm yeah. talking. You know, I just <laughs> run, that's scrolling down, not watching you, man. But like, just you know, yeah, you know, just in general, you know, like that's motivation, man. That's fire, bro. Yeah, no, it's motivational that you. We're just kind of like a regular dude a couple of years ago, and then you just been cranking out content, and then you actually are having all these different platforms having to speak to you. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He came in jump. here without the ski mask. I didn't recognize him, I and know. I heard him heard him speak in the distance. I'm like, wait, that can change his news. Yeah, I know. He said to me, he's like, I, I can't really tell which one's him because he got the mask on. Like, what, then you, you know what I'm saying? You start <laughs> talking. I'm like, wait, that's bro right there. Yeah. So how you start wearing the mask? Like, I just it's just um like I was watching Fifty Cent and them. And you know what I'm talking about, and it's like if they don't know who you is, then it'll be more turn up for you because they want to know who you are. You know, yeah. even if you could show them a picture of me, that we they still want to see me yeah, for yeah. themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you're larger than life too, because it's like you you are representing all the the people out here in shysties, robbing liquor stores and catching bugs. You know, I used to be a shy. <laughs> I used to be the, the stick up kid. So yeah, that's motivation too to let them know that. You can go from that to being on no jumper without robbing people. Yeah, let's go. Well, you probably got to rob some people at, at the beginning of your career, right? No. No, no, no. Is that no. how you got your nickname, Swiper, though? Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah. Take right, it. because people probably hear that and think that you were swiping cards at a certain point, right? No, I ain't know. I wish I would have known how to swipe them. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. But, yeah, but, um, yeah, I was taking all right, so let's go to the very beginning, though. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and what, what your life was like when you were real young. I grew up on the low end um, in the projects, Madden Park projects. And um, it was it, w it was dangerous, man, but it, it never affected the kids because um, it's like people knew. They had rules, policies, and procedures. Like, they had structure. So no kids wanted to be f with. You had to go to school. You know, it wasn't no ditching or none of that. You disrespect your mama, somebody outside the neighbor whoop your ass. You hear me? Like, it was like community. It was a community of its own. But mm -hmm. it was dangerous, though. Like, it was dangerous. But anybody who died back then, when I was growing up, it's like you had it coming or you did some shit and they got you. Right. So w do you remember life before Drill, before Chief Keef came out and kind of changed everything? Or or did you kind of come of age after that? How old are you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 37. You're 37? Yeah. Shut the f*** up. Yeah. I did not see that coming at all. I don't know. Maybe I'm naive or something, but I didn't know you were like that. Yeah. What? I guess that's the value of the mask right there. It's tough to guess somebody's age when they got a mask on. Okay, yeah. so so you're, the older days of Chicago, I heard a lot of people say this. King Yellow was saying the same thing, that that back before the drill wave popped off, that things were a lot more peaceful and that, that it wasn't really a war like it is these days. No, it was still wars and through the city, but it was like clicks, mm -hmm. like clicks into it with each other and shit. And, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't like over no music. Everything is about a though like everything that happens in the streets it's always over a bitch. Mm. like whether people want to admit it or not from the older generation to not it's over a female man right it's over a female that be caused blood that trickle down you know right yeah we hear that about a lot of big celebrities and shit too like that's what had uh what was it chris brown and diddy and drake throwing bottles at each other in the club and stuff that was over a girl yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. But so, okay, like, but as a young dude, like, what were you like? What was your your day-to-day -day like? As a kid, man, I was just, like, running around. We hustling. You know, mama was poor. Mm. So we was hustling. Like, um, we had shut the elevators off. We had a tent. We was in the 10th floor high-rise. So on the first of the month, when everybody got their groceries that's in the building, you had to pass. We was cutting the elevator off. We would turn the elevator off on, like, the fourth floor. 
Then we'll grab their groceries. They'll pay us to take their groceries up. We'll take them to the fourth floor and then ride them all the way to their floor, though. But we'll shut them off to get everybody money. Like, that was our main hustle. Really? Yeah, that was our main hustle. What do you call that? The elevator hustle? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of wild. That was the main hustle. Damn. So, you from the low end, though, right? So yep, I hear that everybody end. talk about the low end, but I also heard that you from Newtown, so, like, break down the difference, or it's the same thing? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just a block name. Newtown's the name of the block? Yeah. And the low end is just referring to? The low end goes from, like, 22nd to 55th state to the lake. All right, I got you. So they're just referring to, like, when they say the low end, like, the numbers? Yeah. All right, for sure. The low end is like the numbers. Yeah. You know? So who else is from the low end? Because I think Mama Doug from the low end. A lot of people. Mama Doug from the low end. Doug from the low end. Brick from the low end. L. A. Capone from the low end. Um, everybody damn near from the low end, man. Everybody who I can that Katie got bands. Mm. D. Wade. That's a lot of people from the low end. Damn. All right. So, but when you were younger and everything, were you like focused on going to school, or was that something you didn't really give it? But oh, I I was I excelled in school. Really? Yeah, I excelled in school. I went to um after I graduated eighth grade, I went to um out in the suburbs, and yeah, I excelled in school. I love school. We was going to school either for the you know for the breakfast first of all, the school donuts because mm-hmm. we was broke as shit, like I say. Then the lunch on top of that one. Then you know and get an education to see the girls. So we love going to school. And the older guys, you wasn't. You was not go, you know you wasn't hanging on no block if you ain't go to school. Mm-hmm. Like you was getting your ass whooped. Really? Yeah. The older guys would whoop your ass yeah, just because the they thought yeah. you should be in school. Yeah, for this in school. Okay. Like they ain't play that, shit. and I'm glad for that. I'm glad for like somebody had some type of respect for somebody. Like it's like this: the generation that's older than me, like in their fifties and up, like they ain't, they ain't got no education. Mm. These facts. My generation got education. My age group. On to like the like 30, 29. Then after that, it's a, like a big ass hole in the wall. Like Duck and them age, Vaughn and them age, everybody dropped out. It's mm. a hole in the wall. So it's a bunch of miseducated people. When did, what, did you finish high school? Or? Yeah, I finished high school, went to college. Yeah. Really? Where'd you go yeah. to college? Earl Washington. Okay, for how many years? Two years. Two years. Associates, business and management. You you finished or you yeah you just, finished okay yeah about finished. What were you planning on doing with that uh, while you were going to school? Um, run my daddy run one of my daddy businesses. Really? So yeah, what did your dad do? Um, he do landscaping. Um, they opening up a new business now, like but the majority of the 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 shits, um real estate and um. Cutting grass, landscaping. So was your dad in the home while you were young? Because you were talking about how broke you were and everything. My dad, he, oh, man, I could tell you a story, Adam. I'm talking about a story that'll fuck you up. Fuck me up. So Pause. we had, um, we was in the projects. We was broke. My daddy, he had came home. He had a boss that was rich as fuck. Uh-huh. You know, and it, it's a place in Chicago on the low end called Groveland. Where okay. rich people at, where the rich people at who got money. Like, and, um. We had moved down there to the house. We had moved down there to the house, chilling, everything. We had rich friends. They was buying us Michael Jordans and shit. Like, these people who own gas stations, type, multiples, and like, shit like that. Like, they rich. The parties was different, you know. On, and that's on somebody else's birthday we was getting this shit. Like, they was, what shoe size you were? They tell your parents what shoe size you were so they could buy you the mics mm. on, on their kid's birthday. Right. So, um, we stayed down there for about, Three years, three years till I was like seven years old, and we moved right back to the same apartment and the projects. Uh-huh. My, my, my mother and my father split, you know, they split. Once they split, my mom started getting high, and then like a year or two, my daddy ended up moving right down the hall from us. But it was still fucked up because, you know, like searching for your mother for the, when, the, when the food stamps come on, you searching for her, and then... You know, they all gone when you do find her. Like, that, that shit hurtful. Like, that shit real So hurtful. she would get the food stamps and just spend them on oh, drugs? Oh, bounce. Bounce. Bounce with them. I tell her to that. I told, I, 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 I used to tell her to the, to the day, you know, like, damn, mom, what happened to our game? You know, we, we she tell us to go to bed on the 24th of December that we could play the game in the morning. We wake up on the 25th. That motherfucker gone. Really? Boxing there. Man, we was crying. Me and my me and my brothers, my siblings. We was crying like a motherfucker. That's a sad one you know, right so there. So it's like, yeah. 
Wow. So, like, did, were you resentful of that? Like, or, or how did you feel having seen that change in your mom? Man, that, that shit, that, like, broke. I, like, I ain't just see it in my mom. Like, I seen my mama go from beautiful to light skin and beautiful to, like, you know, like, it was shrinking her life. And all my friends, mothers, and all them was like that, too. Like, really? it was like zombies. It was like some zombie shit just hit the projects, and everybody was off that shit. Like, your auntie, your uncles, your, you know, older cousins, like, everybody was off that shit. We talking crack or meth or? Crack, whatever they was doing. They was off that shit. Like, mostly crack, though, that crack shit. Like, that, that'll that break down any household. Right. Like, if you off that shit, you, that'll break down your household eventually. Did your mom ever get her shit together? Or yeah, she... she got. Yeah, hell yeah. She that's the that's the most good story, man. She ended up had to do go to prison. You know, she went to prison for six years. Six years. Do you know what the charge was? Um, one to fifteen grams of heroin. Oh wow. Yeah, a dirty cop who ended up getting busted in Chicago. Watts. He ended up coming in investigation with everybody. But my mother was so blessed when she got out that she was big and weight. She got it back up to two hundred pounds and. You know, so she was like, fuck the lawsuit. God bless me. And then, you know, she just lived her life from now. But so you wow. think jail actually did help in that oh, sense? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Jail help you. Yeah. Jail teach you how to stay out of jail in certain situations. But certain people, like, it's just they home. It's just they home. They feel like when there ain't no love on the streets, they do some dumb shit just to go back because they homies in there. You know, everybody who missing off the streets, where they That's at? Where at. I mean, we hear about a lot of dudes who get locked up and they end up doing worse drugs than they did on the street and they got to fight. They get sort of like click up with gang type shit in order to survive in there and stuff. But I feel like maybe for the women, it's a little bit less insane. Like it's a little bit more likely that they might come out a better person. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, a woman. Yeah. Yeah, a woman to be better off. Interesting. A, a, a male and like in this rural, like, they don't want to work for nothing. Like, they don't want to work for it. They're impatient. But the funny thing about it is, Adam, uh, Brimo, they uh, go to jail and work for 10 cent. Mm. Be busting their ass in that kitchen, carrying hot ass pans and burning they stuff and everything in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, for 10, but when they get to the real, it ain't cool. Right. Yeah. When, you always seen that effect where people just didn't want to, like, have jobs and shit was just considered uncool to have a job or did that like take take hold at a certain point once everybody decided with social media and shit that they wanted to be rappers oh yeah motherfuckers is like it wasn't cool it wasn't even cool for instance when e was driving trucks mm. i seen doug and them laughing at him i'm like no nah, bro that's some cash i'm trying yeah. to tell him like that's where the fucking money at you yeah. hear me like, but everybody was laughing. A lot of people was laughing in the city. He a truck, truck driver. Ooh. Right. And I'm looking like, no, nah, they just they just lost. At, at some point, you just got to be lost. What age were you when your mom went in? When my mom went in, I was like, I'm going to say like 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like 19. You're already like an adult at that point. 20, yeah. But was it still difficult? Were you going to visit her a lot and shit? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I ain't going to need a lot to you. Man, I seen my mom like, Twice. Really? Twice in our six years. I ain't going to lie to you. Well, what, like, you. I was in the street shit. I was fucked up and, you know, had to do without going in and out of jail and all that shit. So robbing people and, you know, I got to watch my back and keep the little money I got to keep moving around. So Right. Okay. So, yeah, how did you get into the streets? Because you're talking about you were doing so good in school and everything like that. Like, were you also fucking around in the streets at the same time? No, nah, look, that, that's funny. Like, I, I, I grew up in a... Just because you grew up in a project, bro, that don't mean that you did nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because people got that perception like, um, oh, just because you from the project building, you that. You know what I'm talking about? I grew up. So I grew up 15. Our project buildings got towed down. Yeah. We go to different blocks. 63rd was one of the main blocks. Now, this is a project we talking about. So this just like probably one building, a building and a half that flooded 63rd. From King Drive to Cottage, Parkway, oh, which is Old Block, and flooded everywhere over there, like the whole project. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's where we went after the project um, had went down so when I was 15. So I really never experienced no shootout in the projects. None. I can't tell you them stories. Mm. So I can't tell you them stories, you know. So the apartments getting torn down is how you uh, ended up on 63rd Street and which got you into the street life is what you're saying? 
No, I actually got shot. I got shot in my head. I got shot on over east. And when I was due to get my certificate that summer, right before it, I got shot on everything. I was supposed to get my certificate in May. I got shot in like the 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 beginning of May, April, like April 30th. Some shit like that. I got shot over east. And um that's what really made me like hate people. Like a person who shot me, I ain't even know him. So it was a random act of violence. Thought, thought I was somebody, and then after they shot me and they seen me like uh, uh, down the line months later, they seen me still fucked up, and they tell me like, "Hey, no, nah, bro, that one for you." Like, imagine the nigga, imagine the nigga walking up to you like, "Hey, bro, that one for you." You hear me? What the fuck yeah. you mean? You hit me in the back of my head. You hear me? Like, so you're just walking down the street? Nah, I was in the store. I was in the store over east on Bennett, right down the street from where Ede ended up getting killed. Uh huh. And um. I was in the store. I remember I was happy as hell. We just got the, the school money, you know, the the check that you get from school. It was in a business management office. Okay. So when your last sofa or, or the social on that board, that means your check in the office. So a check popped up. Me and my cousin, we go, we like, shit, we about to spend this, 3200 You know what I'm talking about? Pell grants, all that shit. You know, they was giving out all that shit back then. So um, we, we end up separating. I end up getting my son and... I'm end up sitting in the crib with him, and he fell asleep. And I'm like, I could run to the store real quick, give me some blunts, Italian fiesta, just real <laughs> quick, and make it back. But I went downstairs and told a girl who I knew who went to school with me, cause she watching my, on my son. You hear mm-hmm. me? I never made it back though. I, I was went in the ambulance. So I go in the store, get my shit. I'm standing there, and this little motherfucker come through the door. He couldn't even push the motherfucker door or pull it on his way out. He he was that little. And he walked up behind me. He behind me now in the aisle. And I'm at the counter talking shit to the girl and the dude back then. Uh, pow. Just ran in the back of the head? And I I ran off like a chicken. I threw every motherfucking chip up in the stove. Like, it, it was it was like one of them scenes. Like, so the bullet, like, grazed you or something? Pow. Uh, penetrated. And you was able to run and all that? Effort? Hell yeah. yeah. It, it, he had a uh, 32. How far did you make it? Shit like that. Huh? How far did you make it? Shit, I made it to Italian Fiesta. That's why I collapsed that. What is Italian Fiesta? Um, it's the uh, one of the best pizza places. When you come to Chicago, you got to get Italian Fiesta. Okay. You got to get Italian Fiesta, man. It's a hood pizza that's it's greasy, nice, and it's it's good, bro. Not greasy, but with the the shit that they put on now. But it's it's a hit. Chicago's serious about his pizza because when I first went to O Block, I seen Shoebox Baby sitting there eating a pizza puff. And yeah, I seen that. Told me all about it. Yeah, pizza puff. That's a hit. That's I didn't a, try it. That's I a probably should have. Yeah, that's why I got a close relationship to most of these guys on both sides because, yeah. like, we didn't split pizza puffs together. Like, mm. we didn't win in the store and brought, you know, the deal, the 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 two for three ninety nine with fries and a pop. You know, we split that shit. That you know, each take a sip of. You know, like that's why so, I got a good relationship. So you said you seen the guy that shot you in your head, like. Years later, after the fact. No, right? it was a nigga from over there, from over there in that hood, and he walked up to me while I was getting out the car mm-hmm. and going in the building. It was like, oh no, nah, man, that one for you, bro. It's a dude just like you, you know. But I was glad that you know I would. It did bring some type of, cause I'm still staying over there and I'm looking over my shoulder still. Gave me a sense of clarity. Like, yeah, it gave me a sense like I figured that, cause but, I, don't, I don't know nobody over here. I'm a, I'm in college. So your thoughts wasn't retaliation, cause you know Chicago king of the get back. You know what I'm saying? People usually be on it like that. Why did you? When I got back on my feet, I robbed everything that was <sighs> moving that wasn't a fucking civilian. I'm telling you, everything, drug did all of them. You know what I'm talking about robbing them from that area, man, from everywhere. All right. And you weren't on that mentality until no, I went on that shit. I went on that shit. You know what I'm talking about? Brain aches, pain aches, taking um Percocets with oxycodone. Right. What they call it, you know. Doing taking that shit and it just tweak you out after a while. Right, like Damn. that shit tweak you out after a while. So that that alone just kind of changed you as a person right then and there. Yeah, yeah. What year yeah. was that? This shit, two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. Okay, so it's before drill takes over Chicago. Yeah, it's before drill. Yeah. Okay. I got shot. So what kind of robberies did you start doing? And that was just that just became your day to day after that. Um, first first I was just hitting hitting anything. Like hitting anything that's moving, walking that that I know. Oh, he got he holding or he serving on this block. I'm taking that shit. You hear me? Yeah. My homies need some money. I'm taking it. You know. And then you know, as his summer graduated, like to like '07, I yanked the nigga for two keys. You know, I ain't even right. know what the fuck I had a powder. You know, didn't even know what I had, man. 
What even gave you the idea to rob this guy? How you knew that he just had the work on him? The, the thing about this one, I didn't know. I seen him at nighttime with a uniform on, and it was a holiday. And I'm like, no, nah, don't know post office oh, work this day. He got a bag in his hand. He got, the, and I know back then people was wearing like fake ass vests and shit like that when they selling drugs and shit like that. So, you know, I was I was aware of that shit, and I just happened to hit him, and yeah. Bro, that shit right there, like, you hear a lot about being street smart, being able to notice something like that and actually, like, put the pieces together and, and realize that there was something up, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's from, see, that's from being in school and on the streets, mm. you know, from starving and being in school. One of the top schools I went to, like, for real, one of the top schools in Illinois that I went to, you know, in the suburbs of Allerton Heights, which I graduated from, you know, and it was, like, it was it was it was it was it showed me a different side of life. Like I was a I've been like kicking it with white people and all that shit. Like my friends white. My some of my best friends today is is white. Cause I've been with them, you know, wrestling eighth grade, seventh grade, you know, track, all that shit, all the way up to high school. Damn. So okay, how'd you go about robbing this guy? Just to put a cap in that. I was riding around. I asked my homies the reason why I ain't split it up with my homies, cause they ain't go with me. You know, and I asked them. I ain't had nowhere to go that night. I just had a car, stolen car, you know. I had a stolen car, and I ain't had nowhere to go. My homie was like, I was like, man, you going to ride with me, bro? We finna hit the lick. We going to come up. We we broke as shit. He like, man, I'm finna go in the crib my baby mama. Woo, woo, woo. So I was like, fuck it. I finna drive around. Drive, rolled around, rolled around, rolled around. Made uh, made it up a block, and I seen him, and some, and some just told me, like, if I don't get nothing from him, I'm gone. And when I got it, it was in a diaper bag. He had a diaper bag on him with a like a FedEx uniform on. Mm -hmm. On that thing, he got ganked that night. And this was just a random guy. You never heard anything random, about what happened. Never heard no backlash and none of that. Like a thief in the night. Because I feel like if you're just a random drug dealer with two keys on you, and the two keys comes up missing, there's a pretty good chance that whoever gave you the two keys is gonna want to do something to you. Yeah, I was. I was. I sold that shit so fast. I didn't know what I had. Right. So people was coming. And was like, man, let me, what um, what you got? I got this. I'm taking anything. I'm taking crumbs, bro. Nigga, give me $90. I probably gave him a fucking ounce. Right. You know, like for real. Like, I ain't know what I had. I ain't no hustler. So I was just like, I'll take some more shit. You hear me? Right. Like, that's what I was, that's what I was focused on doing. Like, with with me, I ain't wanna split with nobody. So I always did my capers alone. Cause I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna have to worry about you. Pocket in some shit Like we hit the jackpot And you hit the jackpot In this room And I'm in this room And you get stuff Shit all down Your socks and shit mm. And then we come out Like oh ain't nothing You know Then I see you pull up With a new Range Rover Some shit like that Like I don't wanna go through that So I just always Pull capers by myself Like I feel like th You are actually Like the grimiest Dude that I ever met from Chicago. When you tell a story like that, I'm like, a lot of these rappers, they might act, they might rap about shit like that, but they actually have never been through that kind of shit. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of a, a a lot of the rappers like who who know like shout out to Lil Reese, like I know them like the people who know him, they know I I gang shit, bro. Like I, I really like do it, bro. Like with precision, and I'm getting the bag. If you up that raw, I'm getting it. When I was in it, I was getting it. Right. Like ain't no doubt about it. I'm getting that motherfucker. So is that annoying for you when people act like you're not really somebody who's been through this kind of stuff? I've seen some people try to say that, like, oh, yeah, Trenches News, he was just standing on the corner. He wasn't. Oh, man. Like, you know, I laugh at shit like that because, like, I was in your neighborhood, ain't never got touched, ain't never got shot. You know what I'm talking about? Well respected. You know, and, and then I wasn't with they crowds, the ones who talking. Like, when, when I was over there in that hood, Duck was coming up. You know, I knew Duck. All his life, Brick was over there, you know, from the low end. Yeah. Boss Trail from the low end. You know, most of these guys, everybody from over there from the low end. So you knew Duck and them from the low end, and then you moved to 63rd, yeah. and it was like, oh, damn, we and right they were still over there. Duck and them was over there. So, um, so when we was in Old Block, we was on the Duck and them side at the same time. The whole time, since 2002. We was on both sides. And you used to kick in the Old Block as well, right? Yeah. When, when there's a party over here and it's jumping over here, I'm over here. When it's jumping over there, a party over there, I'm going over there. And everybody knew, you know, where I was from. And, you know, I'm talking about, like, never had no problem. Never had got disrespect. So I got on the Internet.
So, yeah, what was your perspective on the gangbanging shit at that time when you were really getting money running around trying to rob people? Were you looking at the gangbanging shit as a waste oh, of time? Man. Nah, yeah, that gangbanging shit, waste of time. I looked at gangbanging from, like, being in school. Like I said, when I got mixed with the white kids and the Chinese kids and, the, like, we all in the same school, Indians and shit like that, you tend to think different of what people motives is for sending you to do this shit. And mm-hmm. there's always somebody who's sending you to do that shit. Like, like even if you don't want to do something in the streets, somebody got an influence. Like, man, y'all going to let that happen? You know, it's always one of them niggas around. So, you know, I always just, like, saying that that's flunky shit. Like, you ain't going to send me off. You ain't going to send me off. And, you know, I learn, you know, what I need to learn in the streets, which is your paperwork. And once you understand that, and if you were like college educated or anything, like you would be the you would be the coldest in the in the gang because you know all your shit. So everything they try to bring against you, like you being smart and can comprehend the words of the literature, you will fuck them up. Cause like like you would reverse it every time on them. So like Chicago, that's typically how it works on some gang banging shit. Is that when you see like a young kid getting accepted by a gang, they're basically gonna just be sending them on missions to do shit to people. See, it's it's different. It's different than now. Like now, the young motherfuckers, they they don't care like nothing. I'm I'm talking about rob your grandma, strip strip your uncle. Like don't give a fuck, bro. Like they don't care. They they, you know, like like I don't even know what to say about the young. But when I was growing up, like yeah, nigga try to like the law coming there. Oh, huh, hold this short. You know what I'm talking about? Like hell no. You know. And luckily, my daddy always taught me, like, nah, don't, don't take shit from nobody. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, don't let nobody tell you the whole shit. Don't let no, you know. So we was taught, my daddy was still in that shit. Even though we was still broken shit, my daddy was still still in that shit. And when we did see him, you know, he was always a good daddy. Right. Damn. Okay. So, um, yeah, okay. So w- when did you end up doing the four years in prison? Um, 2016. Oh, okay. So that was more recently. Yeah. What I, I know we're kind of going out of order, but what happened in that situation? It was, it was a um, battery. It was a person who um, mistreated me when I was shot. When I was shot the second time in a wheelchair, I was in a wheelchair. A bitch mistreated me, you know. And then when I got strong enough, you know, the what's the name? You know, I got I had got our back, you know. Wait. Okay. So you got shot the second time. What happened in that situation? Oh, riding around, riding around with a motherfucker the whole time. Like he he. He was with the shit, like the back, what they call the back door shit. Like the okay. nigga was with it, shit. And I found this out in prison, like being in prison. You, so you're, this is somebody you were really friends with for yeah. a period of time. How long? I wouldn't say friends with him, but yeah, I'm gonna say friends. You gonna say friends because you, you were know, riding, riding around, around with him, this yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I had took some from a nigga in 2007. Took some from him. You hear me? I took like seven guns. Um, Just ran in his crib. Three or? pounds of weed. I uh, caught the drop. You went up in the crib? No, nah, I caught the drop. Caught him coming out. Oh, really? Yeah, I caught him coming out with this shit. And you just put a gun to him and said, give it, it to me? It, Lord. Lord, like you owe it. Uh, so a lot of times, I ain't even have to motherfucking <laughs> up the gun. On right. everything. A lot of times, like, I could just pump fake and motherfucking, oh, man, you on bullshit. You hear me? That, so, yeah. So. And this was just a random guy that you, you pulled that on? No, no, no. I started doing homework shit, getting niggas' numbers, going to clubs and shit. Oh, wow. You know, a motherfucker told me, uh, a, a real motherfucker told me, like, "Hey, bro, you want to you want to get deep in your shit? Cause if you want to be the best, you got you, if you want to do something, you got to be the best at it." So he got to telling me, like, "Bro, when you when you be hitting your legs, bro, go and get some good clothes, bro. Go mm-hmm. and get some good clothes. Get your head on all that shit, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, it'll come back tenfold. So, so n- you stepping in the you stepping in buildings with people with money, and now they think you hustling. The whole time you taking shit." Mm-hmm. So now they give you their number. They don't even know they gave the jacket their number. You hear me? Yo, this is really the realest jack boy I ever had a conversation with. That's fire. Yeah, yeah you definitely seem like you experienced Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that. I ain't going to tell you no story. It was like I was chasing people down and shooting off. But jacking, like, that, that, that was me. But I respect it because ultimately all that shit is genocide and it is fucking stupid and it's a waste of time. You know, and I understand the concept of revenge. Somebody killed your brother. You want to get revenge on him. I get it. But at the end of the day, like, people should be more focused on getting money. And I'm not saying that robbing people for their weed and their guns is the best way to get money. But I got to respect that you at least had your head screwed on straight, that you weren't trying to 
carry out somebody else's beefs yeah, or some it, shit like that. Adam, it was like some Captain Planet shit, man. You know, you remember Captain Planet? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, that was, it was like, you know what I'm talking but about? But how are you like Captain Planet? Like, recycling I, their you stuff? No, nah, yeah, I'm recycling <laughs> their shit. I'm getting it off the streets. Yeah. Hey, look, it's probably saying some laughs. Like, it's a lot of people be online like, oh, man, he took our guns. Mm. And then you ask them how old they were. When I was 15, he took our, you know, yeah. I'm glad I did. Yeah, I look back at that shit now like I'm glad I did, bro. Like, I probably saved your life. So you said that you robbed the person that was your caretaker or mistreating you? Yeah, who mistreated you? Oh, no, no, no. I ain't robbed, but I had went to jail for it. I did. That's what I did the, the years for. Oh, wait. but Okay, so we still got to get to that. So you you were then riding around with this other dude like almost 10 years after you robbed that other dude, right? And so yeah, then yeah, yeah. that dude ended up setting you up on behalf of the person you robbed? Oh, yeah, I was with him in this story. Hey, look, y'all got to get my book, Adam. I ain't going to lie, man. My oh, book is on right, Amazon, right. Adam. Y'all got to get it, man. How I Survive Chicago Drill. Right, okay. Y'all got to get it, man. I'm talking about it so dope. But I'm going to give you this, Adam, though. You know, I end up getting hit by uh, my family member. My family member who, who I didn't know. I've been in the street so long that I don't even know that this man is my family. This is my family who chase, ended up chasing me down. You hear me? But the person who I was in the car with, I seen the people steady following us. Like, I'm telling them, he like, man, you tweaking. You know, and then he steady hitting blocks. And, like, he clicking the signal when he don't need to click it, you know, ahead of time, way ahead of time. So I was peeping it like, oh, yeah, this, 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 it seemed like weird, but, you know, I ain't thinking nothing of it. So I go in the pill spot, get the pills. Come out, dude Dude got like 50 latches on his though, the pill, man. So ain't no running back up in there. And when I stepped out the gate and that motherfucker said, click, shorty jumped out the car and chased me down. And you know what I'm talking about? He chased me down, just blowing down the block. And he was hitting me, and he ended up fucking up the person who was up in the rental center truck. He got fucked up way more than me. He got hit 23 times. Yeah. How many times did you get Nine. hit? Nine times. Yeah. Wow, and so how bad was it? And was it to your head or like you almost uh, died? Like all over, legs and shit. Wow. Mostly, mostly, majority of them legs. And how long did it take you to recover from that? Shit, like, man, I was in a wheelchair for like from fifteen, uh, no, from all the way to shit. I was on, I was still hurt when I went to jail in sixteen. So yeah, from fifteen all the way for a whole year, damn near. Wow. Were you still living on 63rd at this time? No, nah, I was standing at JoJo Real. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was really? standing at JoJo Real. And actually, I, I'm glad that I'm on No Jumper. I want to say shout out shout out to my boy C Hood, most definitely, because he made me, like, he he helped me so much, bro. Like, got me to stop robbing people, really, and start focusing on getting some money. So shout out to him. But Lil Don, who died, rest in peace to him. The man, when I was in a wheelchair, he came up there. And he helped me the best of his ability, bro. He even put me in the tub one time, bro. Like, I needed to shower. You know, I couldn't do none of that shit. Really? Yeah, I couldn't do none of that shit. Like, a 43% per chance to walk. But I had been, went to boot camp in 06. So I knew by the drill instructors telling us what, what worked, which muscle, and what to help it get stronger. So my cousin came to the crib, tied some sheets over the, over the fucking, um, on the ceiling. Tied some sheets, four sheets around. So I put my legs, tie, he tied my legs up so I can, with my legs. Okay. And, and, you know, they'll be sore for four days. And so when you say somebody mistreated you while you were recovering from that, who are you referring oh, to? Man, what this, they do? This, this, this bitch, man, she, I'm talking about pushed me out in the middle of the uh, Wentworth uh, while his cars was coming and shit like that. Um, she pushed you in the wheelchair yeah, into the street? Hell yeah. My mama dropped me out some money. <laughs> I go to sleep, my shit gone. Ain't nothing I could do about it, you know? Friends who say they your friends, when you're in that wheelchair, they ain't your friend. They charge you. You got some money, bro? I can't do this. Do this. You know what I'm talking about? I experience all that shit. So that's why I enjoy all my shit, YouTube and that, you know, to myself and my boy C. Hood. You know what I'm talking about, man? You know, because he on my channel and he helped me, you know, curveball it. Whether he in the background doing it, but he helped me, like, get to... Why I'm at right now. But so, wait, how'd the girl push you into the street after you after the money got stolen? Oh, she pushed me in the middle of the street in the middle of Wentworth. Wentworth is like a street that back and forth, like cars just flying from 70th to 69th. So you got two, you got roughly three blocks of straight ahead that you could just fly up. Uh -huh. So they flying, she pushed me out of the middle of the street. She was pinching me. She was doing all type of shit, bro. Pushing me out the chair, flipping me out the chair. Man, she did all type of shit to me, bro. Like, and why'd she want to do this to you? 
you know, like you could take advantage of a person when he's down, or you feel like, you know, somebody was treating you when you was down and you you got your get back, or however however she thought. Wow. But when I was able to when I was able to fuck her back up, yeah, I did it. You know what I'm talking about? I, I did it. I, I, I took my, and then the thing about that, Adam, man, I copped out right immediately. You hear me? Immediately. Like, when soon when I went to court, they're like, man, you want to cop out right now? I'm like, hell yeah. So define fucking her up. You just got a chance to beat her ass or did you shoot her? Oh, no, no, no. I ain't get a chance to, I ain't get, I ain't shoot her or none of that. Hell no. <laughs> you sound like kind of <laughs> regret no, it. <laughs> hell no. I, I'm going to do the four years. That ain't, that's on the back. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? But that 20 and all that, nah, fuck that. But you got four years for just beating on her? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. You know, you well, did. it was a fight though. You know what I'm talking about? But you know, whoever called 12 first. You know? Well, you got shot. So it's not like you might have been closer to an even playing field, right? Yeah. Damn. What a fucking story so right there. So how did you go from, like, all this, you know, getting shot t- multiple times, living this life of, you know what I'm saying, the street life, to making YouTube videos? Well, before that, though, like, what was it like those four years in prison? Did that change you a bunch? Oh, hell yeah. I was hustling my ass off. Well, like, you were making money in there. Man, I was hustling, man. I was, um, I made my way to the officer kitchen. And when I got in the officer kitchen, I guarantee any nigga who could tell you, like, the people from Lamron or anybody could tell you, like, who was in jail with me. I don't give a fuck what they talking about. They gonna tell you that for every one chicken I made for the officer, I made ten to sell. Mm. So everyone, if you come and say you want the two piece, I'm gonna cook me twenty of them motherfuckers, and I'm gonna put them time up on my vet. I'm gonna stick them on my shirt, align it with plastic, put the chicken in there, then have somebody saran wrap me that, <laughs> put it on my coat. I got a hundred piece on my back. Oh, I got a hundred piece all on me. And they're not noticing that all this chicken is man, missing? we're walking through the line on the guards, man. We're in the officer kitchen. The what? guards escorted me back, man. That was some good old chicken. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. Just don't pat my chest, man. You know, they be wanting to. Yeah. You was know, that was, the, that was the main way you were getting money? Or you selling drugs and yeah, that shit, was, too? Nah, that was the main way I was getting money. I was uh, taking all that shit, like chicken fingers and shit like that. Six for six six chicken fingers, you know, $2. Okay. And then I wanted, I wanted my shit J-paid, though. I ain't want no noodles or none of that. I can go to commissary for that. Just put that on my books. I ended up getting out the drunk fifty three hundred dollars. Wow! And then, and that time I was in jail fifty three hundred. And, and so did that like change shit for you? Like in terms of like you probably met a lot of people and shit. Like did you did you think that you were gonna get more deep into the streets once you got out or? Hell no! You were I, over I, it, man. I had wrote I had wrote down, you know, um, my man is my nine. Um, I was actually in a cell with T Roy brother, Slutty, who got killed with Vaughn. Right. You know, before he before he paroled out. You know, and end up, but I was in there with him when T. Roy got killed. You know, when H. K. got killed, his other little brother. I was in there, in there with him. You know, so we was just kicking it, chilling. And man, what's your plans? They ain't want to hear it though. Man, I'm gonna go out there and tell the kids they minds, they nine, they are somebody. You know, my boy C. Hood, he made that up. He, he, I am somebody. So, and if you don't like that, man, stop it. You know. So when I said I was gonna do that, and I did everything I said I was gonna do, like YouTube. I said I was going to do that. I was like, man, I'm going to try to check it out, see what's in it. Because people coming in like, man, YouTube, they getting paid off YouTube. YouTube, where it's at. So when they coming in jail, I just remembered it. And then I see people telling, like, all these stories about Chicago. And even if they from there, they don't know them. Yeah. You know, they don't, they don't know them. They just going off another story, you know. Like, I really was around Duck. I really was around Vaughn. I was around O.D., T. Roy. And then K.I. and them and all them, you know, I, I was around them, you know, so I could tell the story, what I tell them, what I seen, you know, it's my story. Mm-hmm. But when you got out, so yeah, you got out and you decided to just get straight into the YouTube shit when you got out? No, nah, I ain't get right into it. Um, it. It was some shit happened. It was, um, I don't know what happened. It was a It was a story that happened in Chicago and I had reported on it. And that motherfucker did like 8,000 views in two hours. And I was like, oh, shit. And I'm just thinking like 8,000 views, some money at the time, which mm-hmm. it ain't shit. But I'm like, I'm thinking there's some money. I'm like, damn. And then next thing you know, my page has got the going up as the stories. As I started telling my stories about the the, the individuals, like Duck and Bob being friends mm-hmm. and shit like that, my page just. So uh, at the time when you made that first video, uh, what was the landscape of Chicago? Like, what's going on? Is Zach TV still around? or? Um, no, nah, because nah, talking about I made 2020, after, right? I made it after, it. so this way. Yeah, I came after. after right? Zach was dead. Doug was dead. 
all of them. They was there for Vaughn was there. Like everybody was there when I started YouTube. So what was your relationship with Vaughn? How much time did you actually spend around with him? Um, I knew Vaughn actually since he came when he came in uh, you know, he was a Vaughn a cool dude, bro. Like, you know, he a cool dude, bro. Like, I wish him and Doug and them could have Patch that shit up because actually they was cool okay. with each other. You know, I used to walk Vine back over there to Old Block to my building. You know, when I Vine stayed on the front. So as I'm we walking back from over there, but at the time they wasn't into it with them. Like they were, it wasn't that that beef that, you know, that shit that's going on right now, because they went to the same school. So you know, they they was cool at one point though. But so w did they actually have like a personal falling out or was it just some gang shit? Man, it, was a, it was over a fight, man. Butter had put hands on on Vaughn, and, you know, it was like Vaughn hated Duck ever since then, man. Like, really? Was just, this on the bus? Yeah, 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 the bus situation, y'all. So bus that, situation. that story's kind of true with, like, FBG Butter. He always claimed But Duck that. never did have nothing to do with it. Another dude told Butter to get on that with, with Vaughn. Another Duck was Duck then, you know, like, when Duck came by there, it was like it, the shit was already happening. You know, and then he just blamed Duck for always for that shit, bro. Like, he just always. Like, See, for a long time, I thought that they they never even knew each other and that Vaughn was just talking about him because that was the most high-profile GD nah, he could man, shit on. Was a, man, Vaughn was around Duck. Like, Vaughn know Duck more than all of them from O-Block. Mm. Like, they just don't know that. When I heard Vaughn say he wasn't over there, I'm like, damn, I done walked you back three, four times back over there. So I know, I know that, you know, you was over there, but... But while he was still alive and everything, was your perspective on Vaughn that he was this crazy serial killer the Trap Lord Ross told us he was? Man, I ain't gonna need a lot to you, man. Hey, Vaughn, he he Vaughn. Vaughn is it, it is what man what hey, Vaughn is a real dude, bro. Like if he was here and you said something that was wrong, he will correct you about it. Mm. Like he'll correct you about it like, no, no, I ain't I got more than that. You hear me? Like he 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 loved this shit, bro. It, it, it just was Vaughn, bro. When he, but I'm telling you from when Vaughn, when I first met Vaughn, he was a good person, like a, a kid, and like he was a he was a he was a good person, bro. He had a hard give you his last, like fight bullies for people, like he ain't let nobody bully nobody mm. or none of that. And then you know he started rapping, and you know him and Duck, that's how they. But I wish they could have made some music together, though. Really. Mm. It would have been dope, bro, because they know each other. Like, they know each other, bro. They didn't been on the block and, like, you hear her? I bet you ain't hear her. You know, like, shit like that. When you see shit like that, you like, yeah, they had something going on. For right. me to be with Adam and saying, damn, Adam, you hear her too? I mean, you married, but, you know, but. <laughs> I still hit it. <laughs> um, but we had Paparazzi Poe in here the other day, and he was telling us that he thinks that Vaughn was a little zesty overall. And his one of his arguments was like, why, why else would he be trying to fuck with K.I. when she was a dyke? And we were like, well, he hey. wasn't really trying to fuck her, right? He was just trying to line her up. Hey, man. Hey, they, yeah, he, you know, he ain't from Chicago. No mm. disrespect, but, you know, anybody could see through that shit. You you just seen through it. So, you know, it's, that's bullshit. Okay. But Vaughn, man, he far from zesty, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I don't even like when people say that shit. Like, even when the tape came out and Vaughn was in a, in a saying that shit, hey, look, man, when you in a county and it's, 20 motherfuckers stacked up on one deck that's your ops and you get to see them mm -hmm. you watching them and they looking like hyenas like yeah yeah, we can't see that part of the camera when they doing like this to them we only see what Vaughn like nah I can't go in there PC I'm gay mm -hmm. you know he, you gotta say what you gotta say anybody know that and I've been in that situation where a n the niggas told me like yeah your homies them gone now we finna we finna kill you swipe and when they said that I walked straight to the booth Hey, look, can you call my auntie? I need her to uh, move me off this deck on that thing. Mm. I got 20 motherfuckers saying the same thing. So it's got to be some truth in some of it, you know? It's so. crazy because we got, like, old school dudes who are judging that and being like, nah, that shit is not acceptable. But to me, in that moment, it's like life or death, right? Yeah, man. They, You know, you got a lot of too tough people, bro. Mm. Niggas too tough out here in this world, bro. And, like, they just tough, bro. Because if a nigga up a guy, I'm running. Diving, like all that shit. It's about survival, right? Mm -hmm. The the winner is who lasts longer, right? Right. So yeah, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to last longer. Right. So even do you think Vaughn was scared of Lil J though? Hell no. Nah. Like he was telling the cop, like if if I go in there with Lil J, then you gonna rape me. No. Nah. 
Mine ain't scared of Lil J, man. No. Lil J ain't scared of him either. But he ain't scared of him. Like, dude, Shorty got the heart of a lion, bro. Mm. Like, Von, he gonna fight, too. Like, he gonna fight. I mean, we saw that. That's how he got, yeah, and got don't taken look, out. Don't he look like he a professional, how he was. Yeah. Yeah, like, he come off of it. Butter, too. Butter, too. Butter, a uh, 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 motherfucker, he hands. I done seen him beat grown man down on the blocks. Really? I done seen him put hands on the motherfuckers on the blocks, man. Like, for real. Right. Damn. Okay. Um, with the little Jay situation though, like you, you consider him a real one, even with all the shit that came out about him recently. I ain't gonna need a lie to you. I know Lil J before the rap shit, before all that. Like I said on my platform, if Lil J hit me up and say share his music or something, I'm still gonna share his music, bro. Like I don't, I mean, would not would I be jumping in the bed like P Diddy with him and knowing that he did that <laughs> shit? Hell no. Nah. But you know, it, it it is what it is. Like. I love his family, you know. Like I don't, I mean, that's his prerogative, you know. But like, I wouldn't be around him to even feel that way, you know, about him looking at me. Uh, yeah. You know, so yeah, I still fuck with him. I still fuck with him. I knew him before the rap shit, before he was the cloud lord or the any of that. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy because you know I'm open minded. Like I wouldn't give a fuck if he was gay. I wish he would just admit it because it's kind of hard to accept him denying it. But then also DJ used interviewing the transgender woman that he was allegedly sleeping with, had a relationship with. Obviously, we've seen shit on the on the cameras and everything. And then you also have somebody like Yellow telling a story about him trying to kiss him off ecstasy pills or whatever. At a certain point, it just becomes like, well, how the fuck could this possibly all be wrong? I ain't gonna lie, my boy, my boy get very aggressive about them honey buns, man. Like he gets very aggressive about that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like I seen him get aggressive, like three, four videos, like over aggressive, mm. you know. And like, but the first tape, I'm gonna say this: the first tape, I can't say that was Lil J. You know, I With the, we, the the green suit. I can't say that's him, man. It's I mean, it's paperwork though. They said it's paperwork to it. But I can't say that's Lil J. But what I can say is though, like we seeing uh, the other tape, like after the fact, and the 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 this news was like, you know, he mad because I wouldn't come over there. Mm-hmm. You know, when you in jail, you know that's the first thing you stay away from. Like that's the first rule: stay away from them motherfuckers out their face. You know, you shouldn't even have no conversation with them. You know, and unfortunately, he just been over there so long that shit. He probably just had to adapt to his environment. You know. Do you think that Jay Main would be calling him the Chirac Tangerine if he was out? I ain't gonna lie. When he catch him, like he gonna have to, he gonna have to, he gonna have to whoop. He gonna have to whoop, whoop, whoop. I ain't gonna lie. When he catch him, if he like, if he end up in the same building with him, like he definitely gonna have to, you know, answer to it or. Oh, J Man should not get arrested in Chicago. J Man, man. Hey, look. Shout out to him though. Shout out to J Man. He doing this motherfucking thing, and. I'm glad that he doing it the he doing it the right way now. Like you ain't no thug or nothing. You ain't gotta be no thug. You ain't gotta be something. You ain't you know, mm-hmm. you got a good job, all that shit, bro. I like people, you know, once they find out and see, like you gave him opportunity, say cheese and all them and you know, he that's his lane, bro. Being funny and, you know, girl hoes and being around girls and smoking his weed, like shit like that, bro. That's him. I like what he doing, though. What's your relationship with J-Man? Because it seems like y'all two don't don't really see eye Oh, eye man, when I, you know, me and J-Man had some shit on the internet, man. We didn't have some, you know, back and forth. But, you know, I'm glad to see that, you know, he came up, like, my story is real. You know what I'm talking about? My stories that I All tell, right. they be lying and saying that. They they sit around and say, oh, yeah, he lying, he lying, he lying, yeah. he lying. You know, and then motherfuckers sit on the couch. Whether it's DJ you shout out DJ you whether it's him, or yeah, they going to tell you, bro, like, it's going to eventually come out, and then when they do, nobody say, oh, sorry, or, you know, so I, I really don't pay attention to the internet no more. I just drop it in. So one of the famous stories you told was, so the famous line that Fredo got is, no, Cheeky got, is Fredo in the cut, that's a scary sight. And you said that that line actually came from a time when Fredo was shooting at FYBJ Man, and he used the girl as a shield. Yeah. So that's how that line came. Yeah. You was there. Yeah. Break that. Break that down. We was like, in. The, I was actually in the crib, and but the crib to the porch that they was on. You know, I was in that crib, and when the shots go off, you know, you know us. The first thing a black motherfucker do is to jump up and go towards it. I don't know why, but that's just in the trenches. That's what you do. You go see who got hit after the gunfight. So we look out the window. We see motherfuckers stretched on the ground, 
somebody trying to jump a gate, somebody getting chased down the block. You know, it was like a movie. You hear me? It was like a motherfucking movie. You know, and then, you know, I just always remember the story. So when I told the story, I told it because Fredo gone. So I was like, I could tell this story. But then it ended up spreading to them sure. saying it they self. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, this what happened. You know, so. Because sometimes with Jay Main, he'll tell you a crazy ass story and you kind of can't tell if it's a real story or if he's just fucking around to like fool the people out there. Because he tells the story so crazy that you're sort of like when he was telling that story on Say Cheese about that, like using the Oblockian girl as a as a, a human shield and he's holding up the pillow and shit. It's like he's telling the story in such a funny way that I almost can't tell if he's being serious oh, or not. Yeah, he was holding that. The hoes trying to get away like, like you tussling for your life on the porch. I'm looking through the window. He got her. He got both of them. He both of them. It was two girls. He got them tussling with them in a way, like you know, <laughs> like for real. And that's Fredo like that. Santana out there blicking the street. Yeah. But why do you think that uh, Fredo would have an issue with J Main like that at the time? Was this you after know, he started Main, dissing? No, J Main was like hanging with him. You ain't had you ain't had J Main say I was just with them like a day before that shit happened. Right. Like he said it. I was with them. So you know they probably rolled through. And see this nigga outside with them and everything, bro. Like, you know, that 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 calls for some shit. You know, you never know what it'd be over. Over you know? the girls. Yeah. I uh, know. You no, just seeing him with them. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Bro, didn't we tell you to stay from over here? You know? What was your opinion on Fredo in general? Oh, Fredo, that was my boy, man. I love Fredo. Long live Fredo, man. Like, I met Fredo through a guy named Dark. Young nigga with money, man. Uh, Long live Dark, man. Ended up getting killed. And that's who Chief Keith and them, all them, they be saying his name in songs. Dark gang, dark gang. We don't have no, we don't play no hard game. Shit like that. That's Dark, who a uh, deceased member from the Calumet building. And yeah, we met through him, and me and Fredo was just like, we was broke as shit when we was with Dark. So, like, we'll be the ones holding the guns, shit like that. Like, we'll be the ones, like, um, like they got money. So, if they come to Chicago, they come get us. You know, they come to the city, they come to get us to ride around with them and shit. Mm -hmm. Go to the mall, they tear down, they tear down for us too. Go get what you want, you know. Get us some money at the end of the night, you know. So you was around there early on, like when the drill scene was really just starting off. You got any like Chief Keef stories? Oh, Did man. you know him personally? Hell yeah, Chief Keef used to come up my crib, man. He ain't never wanted to go to school. It was, it was like he came up to my crib and I took a liking into him, bro, because I see him like all he like used to like to do is smoke weed. That was all Keith liked to do, man. Still pretty weed. close to true, yeah. yeah he, it's still like his primary thing, I think, in he life. He liked to smoke weed, and Keith been rapping. Like, he been rapping. Like, I heard Keith in 2009, he had a song. 2008, 2009, he was walking around with a CD. It was called Bitch Nigga is Cracking. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get everybody, all the little people who was young then in the old block, well, it was Parkway then, they know that song, you know, who was around him. So he had like a little, I still started seeing him like, like he like, I'm gonna be rich. And I started seeing him like, damn, if he got 50 motherfuckers in oh, this this little spot that know his song, song for song, yeah, he gonna be rich one day. And Keith Rich, he deserve it, man. But he used to come up my house and um, my girl got mad one day. She was like, he can't keep on coming up here. DCFS ain't gonna take my kids. You know, she got on some type of shit like that. So. You know, I just was telling them, but uh, yeah, I love Sosa, man. I love Keith. Like, uh, I've been around him, and like, I seen him when he ain't had nothing, and then I see him now, and like, I I'm proud of him, man. He don't owe nobody nothing either. From 63rd, none of that shit. He don't owe them nothing. I'm a witness. He don't owe them nothing. Like, nothing. Even like any of his boys from Oblock? Man, he don't owe nobody nothing. Why you feel like that? Even though he really technically don't, but why do you say that? When he when he was when he was down, like I only seen Reese, I only seen T Roy, I only seen Vaughn, you know, like them the main people. When Reese coming over there, he'll be with Reese. Or when he go over there to Reese them block, he with Reese them. Keith was a motherfucker who go on every block, like he going everywhere. He just walk into every motherfucker block, bro, like miles away. Yeah, like he never cared, bro. So what about Ted on Ball out? Where where they running at? around? They went around then, but um, Tato actually from the low end though. He from the low end. Do you think like when you think about Chief Keep's legacy with the younger generation of Chicago, 
do you think that they hold him in as high regard as they should? Or because, like, you know, you see Dirk and, and Vaughn doing videos in, in O Block and shit, even in the last couple of years, maybe not super recently with Dirk and shit, but, you know, they, they kind of like seem a little bit more connected to the city still, where obviously Chief Keith at a certain point just stopped going back. And I don't even think that was his decision. I think it was just some legal shit where it just was a bad idea for him to be going back, right? I ain't gonna lie to you, man. He ain't miss shit by leaving. <laughs> and he actually preserved his life yeah. by leaving on everything, bro. Like, he won. Mm. If you say somebody won and got out of Chicago, like, he won, bro. Like, he ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Like, he ain't did nothing. Like, he been in Cali living his best life, you know, when, like, he seen it. He got snaked early on, so he seen it. Like, they showed their hand. What do you mean he got snicked? Like they ain't they ain't give him a chance to sign the to let the ink dry on the check. You know, before he got the check, they you know, when a robbery to the house and all that. They Ball did stop. that early. The boss stop situation, but yes. what, when was that? That's before the check. Oh before okay. the check. Before time. he even signed? Yeah. So wow. you know But he had a house in LA at the time. Then he robbed his LA mansions. So yeah, no, right. No, no. And 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 Deerfield somewhere, like Really? Yeah, it was the one that yeah. Oh, okay. I it always thought that, that story was in LA. Yeah, it was the one in what's the name? Mm. They drove there. Yeah, it it was the, it was in in out that way. The first crib that he had. Yeah, out there. Damn. I seen a video where uh, cause I watched a lot of your videos where you was actually saying that a girl started the war between STL and O Block. Oh yeah, for sure. You know uh, which girl specific? Yeah, how'd that happen? I mean, yeah, you know she she's still alive. You know, so I don't want to put a spotlight yeah, yeah. on she. Ain't, on YouTube, but I was just talking to my boy C Hood to um today and yesterday. We was talking in the hotel room and we looking at it like damn all these people dead from this side, this side. From over, this one girl. From this bitch on that thing, bro. Like and that's real. Like Where is she from? Is she from Old Block? She from sixty third? Like Yeah, she from sixty third. She from uh, yeah, um Parkway. You know her family. Even if you don't want to say her name, like who was the people dealing with her that kinda started it off? Cause I know like E Day and Billionaire Black had the diss songs, but oh no, nah, this hundred. beyond this, this beyond that shit. There's some um she going with one of them, and then she going she going with a a person like y'all don't know him. Like he ain't in no camera light or none of that. And, you know he was he was younger then, but he ended up getting shot in his head. You know beyond this shit, like this is like the first strike in the straw, like between them they they generations. Mm -hmm. You know. Two of them got hit up, and then it just, you know, spiraled out of control. But it was over a bitch, though. She came, oh, they said you broke, and they said that y'all y'all ain't got no money, and they getting all the money, and, you know, shit like that, bro. And <laughs> yeah. they run up, oh, they said that. You know, and, and, and now it's, uh, all these fucking people dead, and people still dying for this shit right now, and they don't even know. You ask a motherfucker, like, bro, why you on with a motherfucker? Let's get an interview with her. You know, I wonder if she like goes through it. I wonder if she feels guilty when she closes her eyes at night, or you think that she don't give a fuck. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Does she know that she's responsible? Like, you think she know? She probably don't. She probably don't look at it like that. She probably, you know, people look at it, and then she grown and got kids and shit. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know how she'll look at it now, but. I know back then she probably wasn't looking at it like that. She probably didn't know what she was doing. And this is when O Block is still called Parkway yeah, Garden. So yeah, like O.D. Yeah. Perry. Wick City, yeah. Shit like Wick that. Wick City. All yeah. right. So uh, I seen that you also said you had a relationship with O.D. Perry, right? Oh, uh, yeah. That was my boy. How you know him? I knew O.D. from O Block, from, from before O Block, from over there. Like um, when I got out of jail, I had came home and like I came home from boot camp and all that. And I ain't go, I ain't I, like my block been in there. But I ain't really start hanging in there till 08. Like, I ain't go in there, period. Like, I ain't hanging there, like, hanging there. Like, I'll go over there. My homies, them, they under two or three of the buildings, deep as hell, from my block. So I go up under that, kick it with them all day, smoke, drink, weed, you know, motherfucker throwing the grill or something. But then I'd be back out somewhere in the neighborhoods. You know, I never, but in 08, I started staying over there. So when I started staying over there, I, I bumped it to Trey Five. Now, Trey Five and them, they whole family from, the low end, Stateway, you know, let eat all of them from Stateway, you know, they family, so they from the low end. So when I bumped into all them, you know, got to knowing them and bruh bruh, that was my love, that was that's my homie. I don't give a fuck what they nobody say about bruh bruh. Hey, they ain't gonna say it to his face. 
I put my bottom dollar on that. When he, bruh, bruh, get out, interview bruh, bruh. Tap in, bruh, bruh. Yeah. Do you have when any he, idea when he's supposed to get out? When he get out, do your homework on bruh, bruh. <laughs> I'm trying to. Do your homework you on him. Homework. So, but, all right, but why, why was O.D. Perry, like, the guy for O'Block? Like, why they name it after him? Like, what was Man, he, you was, had, he, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was respected. Like, he was quiet, but he wanted to be fucked with. Like, he was one of them. Like, he was quiet and don't don't start nothing. But, like, he'll help finish some shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like, he'll help, you know, whether the problem was or a person fuck with him and they don't fuck with y'all and then he could stop it. Like, he has because they fuck with him. Be like, all right, bro, I'll strengthen you. I ain't going to do that, you know? Like, shit, he was respected, though. Like, he had a, a manner about himself. Like, his mama did a good job, man. His mama did a good job, man. It's just unfortunately, like, that, like, he didn't even live in and uh, when he got killed, he stayed in the hundreds. You hear me? Like, it's coming back to your old stumbling grounds every day. You know, that, that shit going to eventually happen to everybody, though. You know, when you coming back to a war zone and you ain't got to be in there, you yeah. know, that's what's going to happen. And that's what happened to him. He was just coming back, you know, from his block and back and forth and got killed. But that was my homie, though. Like, every day, playing dominoes, the game, um, smoking weed, um, hitting the stain. You know, shit like that. Like, that was my boy. So, uh, another question I got in regards to, like, OD. So, like, him and Boss Top and Trey Five were, like, the main people running around together at that time? No, nah, not not Boss Top. No, nah, Trey Five. Trey Five? Trey Five, OD, yeah. So, what about Boss Top? Because it seemed like nah, Boss Top. No, nah, that that's the new generation, the rap. The rap the rap generation. I'm talking about when I was in there. On, like, no. Nah. You ever ran into Boss Top? Like, yeah, you know? I know Boss Top. Oh, boss, boss Top, Boss Top, cool. Like, Boss Top, cool. He he, cool. Like, to know him, it's like he know who I am. I know who he is. I don't say nothing about him though. Like, but yeah, I know his brothers and shit like that. Is he doing like four or five years right now? Yeah. I remember when I interviewed him about a year ago that he was talking about how he got shot. Just he just said he was walking outside Obok and just got shot at from a car or some shit. You believe that or what, what kind of shit was he mixed up in? I don't know, man. It's just like being over that period. Like when you was over there, you mm. took a chance. Yeah. A person could pop up on the side of the walls and the fuck I'm 22 being over here. You hear me? Like bullets don't discriminate. So mm. when you was over there, I was looking at it like, damn, I done came over there. But you came, you right. know, you came right and you came bulletproofed up and all that shit. Like y'all was decent, bro. Like y'all ain't just come in, you know, because leaving out of there, a motherfucker wet up the car just because they seen it coming out of there. Like, right. She get real. But well, okay, when you when you see a situation like whether it's a blogger like me going there or whether it's like, you know, you hear about people doing tours with different YouTubers and stuff, like I'll 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 take you around O Block for a couple hundred dollars or whatever. Do you think anybody would actually do something to a tourist or to a blogger like me, or is that type of energy typically just reserved for people who are actually kinda involved in the street politics? Oh no, for 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 you, no. They they gonna do it because they want to be on camera. Mm. You know, that's the difference between you got a camera and you ain't got shit to bring to the table. You know, right? Like you gonna stretch out their views. You know, just taking a picture with you. You know, shit like that. So that's how they look at it. You know. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm lucky I survived. But the yeah. the craziest part of that was uh, was just like everybody in O Block just marching over to the Vaughn mural. This is only like half a block away or some shit. It's like right there. But it still was kind of crazy. We like 40, 50 dudes, like all yeah. young, young kids and, and like a, big and security just guards a, just romping over there. That's just a small percentage of them. Like yeah. if they out there, like two, three hundred people, you will see it like, damn, bro. Like it's that many motherfuckers. Yeah, it's more than that. Like when I was over there, it used to be good times, though. Like we used to have parties right in the middle of the circle, like darting them, throwing money up and. The, all the females around, like it was, it was beautiful over there, bro. Like it wasn't all that shooting and shit, like it is now, bro. It was, it was beautiful, bro. Like parties every night, all summer. You could sleep outside. Oh, you could sleep outside right there on Vine them front and not be shot or none of that, bro. Right. At one point in time. So here's a question I got then. So you said you used to be hanging out on 63rd and Old Block. So yeah. when was the first time where you was like, yeah, I probably can't hang out on both sides? Oh, when it got serious, a guy named Ra Ra got killed. You know what I'm saying? And he ended up getting killed by his own homie from Parkway. But they they was accusing, you know what I'm saying, my homies and them for doing it. 
even though I was cool with OD and them, you know, shit like this, but these the bigger guys. So, you know, they 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 was like, it was like my block got into it with them. So, you know, I ain't gotta be over here anyway. You hear me? Like, but I stayed in there. I was the last man standing over there out of everybody. Everybody else ran shit. We ain't finna be doing man, I was coming out the building shooting like John Wick some days, bro, to get out that motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie to you, like, for real, like, um, uh, for for weeks, you know, cause I I this the only place that I had to live, like I ain't had nowhere else to go. I didn't burn either burn my bridge or you know the person who I stuck up know that spot where where I'm going. They probably was watching that motherfucker and I rode past and just happened to see him. So I can't go there, but I know ain't nobody coming in these for this this shit right here. So I was safe. So I was like I'm willing to you know bang it out with these dudes. Like they ain't really shit, you know. I ain't seen it been a worse shit than this with than them. So you would really have to walk out the crib just to go do something and actually have to shoot at people while oh, you were. Oh man, I didn't. I had to walk out with with a fucking all these bag, bro. I'm talking about with two thirties in each hand, like John Wick, bro, ready to squeeze at any time. Like a nigga could come, but nigga came from on the side of the building, just unloaded on me, bro. Missed every shot. What? Like for real, bro. Like this this one, the guy had got killed though. This one, one of the, one of the, you know what I'm talking about, his name Reezy. He had got killed. He was the first person who ever got killed over there. Uh-huh. Like, he was the first. And he was a cool-ass dude. Like, I used to kick it with him. And it was over a hoe. I mean, I ain't, well, it was over a hoe while he got killed. Like, it was over, you know, like a female, literally. Like, female ran. Oh, he touched me on my ass. They knock him out, knock his brother out. He ran down there, grab him, come back, and he ended up getting killed. On that thing, like over over a female, so. Damn, bro, you're really painting the picture right now. Hey, let me let me ask you this: Is so, what was it like starting to achieve some success on YouTube? You remember the first time you got a check? You were actually like, "Oh shit, this this could really change my life." Oh hell yeah! I think um, man, my first check was like five thousand dollars. Really? Like in twenty eight days, I'm talking about this is like two months of me on YouTube. First, that's got to like, really just like change your mind, right? Check. Like, when I got monetized, I got monetized in, like, three days. Mm. When I when I, th- I went crazy, bro. I dropped, like, the, 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 uh, um, the, 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 some of the Cloud Boys, the, you know what I'm talking about? The Rise and Fall. I mm. started the Rise and Fall of the FBG, and after that, my shit just started going up, and then you see eights, and then you see twelves, and then you, you know, you like, fuck, the sky's the limit, you mm. know? Like you could do what you want to do. Because making ten, twelve thousand dollars in a month, I mean, that's gotta like kind of fuck your head up in a way when you've really been broke and really like have never made money off the internet before. I mean, I even me, I had to grind for years and years and years to ever hit ten thousand in a month. That, and it's oh, like, yeah, man, that sounds like an impossible amount of money when you're really coming up. Yeah, it, it, and this motivation, this goes back to the motivation for the streets. Like y'all could get this shit. Like you ain't gotta be no flunky or none of that. You ain't gotta get die in the streets no more. Mm. You grab you a fucking phone, get you some internet, and make this shit happen. Tell your stories. Cause if you don't, I'm gonna tell them. You know, they get bad when I tell their stories, but then they come out and say the same shit I said, you know? Like, so I, I just be like, you know, I'm just gonna tell my stories how I'm telling them, man. You know, they come to real life in the in the end, man. Like, was there anybody you were looking at in particular that kind of you decided to base your channel around? Like, were you looking at somebody like Truth Teller and seeing what he was doing and you wanted to do fuck your... Fuck no. No? Fuck no. Why? Hell no. You think he's a bitch or what? No. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. <I> Just <laughs> think... the way you responded hey, no, to that no, right no, there. No, no, no. <laughs> so like no, no, no. This is what I'm saying, though. Because, like, when I was watching him one day and I was high. You know what I'm saying? I was high as hell. And, you know, I'm fresh out the joint, so, you know, the weed, it hit different when you mm. first start smoking. Once you got to love that, right? Eat. So I'm watching him, and he like, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I ain't 100% sure that, that, that is right, but a source told me this, and, you know, I'm like, this man told a whole fucking 18-minute story. I'm thinking he, like, he on point with something. Like, mm. with no, when he's saying he ain't for sure about it, though. And that's when I was like. And then I start seeing them drop like two, three videos a day, five videos a day. And I'm like, I'm seeing them like 5,000, 8,000, um, 10,000, 12,000 his videos. He's just dropping them. And I'm like, oh shit, that must be the algorithm. Mm. So I was peeping shit. I was peeping shit, but nah, I ain't, I based my channel off me because like, ain't, ain't no, ain't too many, hey, I ain't gonna say, not, ain't too many bloggers. They can't, ain't too many people could tell you that they've been around Duck, Vaughn. And all of them together, like, I mean, they can't tell you this shit. Like, they can't tell you 
they can't. Yeah, so the stories hit a little harder when it's coming from somebody who actually got experience with these people in relationships, right? Yeah. It, it, so you it, don't it, really uh, respect, not respect, but you don't really just listen to any of the other bloggers and stuff, like even Chris Barnes or, I know you seen him before too probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I really don't watch nobody, bro. Like, I really don't watch nobody, bro. C-Hood, I watch him. And um, OMC and Queen Lotus, I always watch them, you know, because they, they like, like they got different perspectives. Like they said, they they civilians, so they speak from, you know, from Nate's point of view. But they from the streets, you know, they from the streets too. And I like that type of shit. I like that type of shit. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of wild because it's like the more life experience you have in terms of being around shit, the better you could be as a YouTuber. But also, like, the more reason you have to be quiet and not want to, you know, anger people. I mean, they can get angry, man. Hey, long as you don't fuck up that check, you can get as angry as you want to. You hit me like. But there's got to be videos that you've thought about making, and then you're like, nah, if I make that video, people are going to be so mad at me. It's not worth it. I'm making them. <laughs> I'm telling you, out of my making them, man. Like, I'm making them, especially like Yvonne's situation. He gone, KI gone. I could tell my story. I wish somebody would give me some cameras and let me tell my stories and we could split the money. Like, I got real life. I got real life stories with them, bro. Like I want to bring to life, bro. Like some real shit, bro. Like we can make, like I could make some money, bro. Like stories that don't nobody know. Can't nobody tell you, bro. Like all the stories that you be saying mostly about them. All you gotta do is go through my two years, and you are gonna be like, oh, he already said this shit. Mm. He said this shit. That's what most of the channels based on, bro. Like my channel. Like I fed them for years, bro. Like for the two years, like the front runner. Like, every story. They ain't know about none of that. Me sleeping on the couch with Wooski and all that. Don't nobody got them stories, man. I was just about to ask Me you. and Duck on the couch together, sleep. You know mm. what I'm talking about? Like, for real. Shout out to G. Dayski and Creed, too. Because, yeah, we was at their house. We lived together, me and Duck. So, you know, it shit hit different, bro. It, it really do. Mm. So, you got any Wooski stories? Man, I got I got a couple Wooski stories, man. Wooski is a, Wooski is a, a person, bro, who, like, put itself before everybody. But everybody don't put themselves before him. You hear me? Like, and they hate, and I hate that he like that. You know what I'm saying? How he is. You know, cause them, they ain't gonna do the same thing for him, bro. Like, nobody will, bro. A nigga say they'll jump off the roof for you. If you die, I'm gonna take out all these people. Then you see a nigga die and everybody's kinda like Roche. You know what I'm talking about? The block is deserted. Like, I just hate that shit. But yeah, I got a lot of stories with Wooski, man. Like, Wooski and them older brothers, you know, I, I hung with. Um, over there in Old Block, but they had gotten to it, you know, about some money, Dart and them and all them. Them was their crew. They had a little crew called ABM. So when they got into it with them, they had hang over here. And one day, me and Brick was in the hallway and they was pulling up. So we like, I'm like, I'm finna go out the hallway and get them, grab them and bring them in the hallway. So we in the hallway drinking Remy and smoking me, Brick, and Wooski and them brothers. So when I was like, well, Wooski at, I'm saying, well, Wooski at, because somebody just came through and shot, and I don't know, like, if he aware of it because he just came to the block. He just came over there. So I'm like, well, Wooski at? And he like, my little brother over here? I'm like, damn, his big brother don't know he was in the streets. Like, he like, call him right now. They count, He came up, called him by his real name and shit. Like, yeah, this is my big brother. I'm like, damn, you know. The brother you're referring to, is it Big Mike? No, nah, no, nah, Big Mike too. Big Mike. Big Mike is like King Von, like, you know, his levels, Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Son. Yeah. Like, to the everybody else, to everybody else in this world, like, to everybody I know, there's gonna be a lot of pissed people. How, how, how? He told on Von and all that shit. It ain't got nothing to do with this. Michael, Mikey, Michael, whatever y'all wanna call him, Mike, Mike. He is Miyagi and Von was Daniel Son on that thing, bro. So, yeah, that 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 little motherfucker, like, he been doing shit. Like, he been bad since I been old block. Every time, Mikey, Mikey, he did this, he did this. He robbed people. That, you know, he been like that. When Vaughn was, you know, just after the girls, he been like that. It's it's so crazy to think. So Big Mike was teaching King Vaughn how to, to do his shit. Yeah. But King Vaughn and Wooski hate each other. Man, it, it really ain't like what people be saying. Because, look, how can I be your rappy? You my rappy. So when I come over and slide to your crib, I'm coming to your mama house, Wooski mama house. So if Wooski in the house, you know, it's for the internet. You like think shit. that Vaughn just started putting them in songs because he's like a high-profile GD? 
He didn't he, really have a reason to go had at profile, him? He had profile. He up there. Wooski up there. And then, you know, he know Wooski. Like, Wooski ain't one of them ones that he, like, he don't know. Like, he don't know KI them. He know them from the internet. Like, beef with them from the internet, really, and shit like that. But he know Wooski from being over there. And, you know, like, he know Wooski. So... It is crazy, too, though, because as much as Wooski was known or even Duck was known, like Vaughn got so big that Duck got significantly bigger as a result of all the fans wanting to see who Vaughn was talking about. Run that back, Adam. Run that back. Run that <laughs> I'm back. just saying that, like, Wooski had a name. Duck had a name. Obviously, Duck had hit songs and shit before Vaughn even really started putting music out. But at the same time, to a lot of the fans, like I feel like Duck and Wooski like became so much more famous as like the villains that Vaughn was rapping about. I mean, they they were famous that before. Right. Like even even with a name like Wooski been had a name. Like the little Wooski, you know, little, you know, motherfucker, he been had a name. You know, Vaughn was like Vaughn. They Vaughn, you know. Mm-hmm. When I was over there, that's what I called him. It wasn't no King Vaughn. Like, I ain't, I, I wasn't calling him no damn King Vaughn. You know, you younger <laughs> right. than me, you know, shit like that. When you're that, young, but, you don't get to call yourself yeah, King. Yeah, you don't yeah. get to call yourself that. But as he grew up and losing friends and shit happens, you know, he grow up. But the rapping shit, that's what surprised me, you know, with, with Vaughn. The rapping shit, like, I know he ain't no rapper. I never heard him rap. I never, you know, like shit like that, and and I'm like, it, that could be like hurtful mm. for you too, you know, by you rapping and you can't decipher, you know, entertainment from the streets. Right. You, know, you bring your street shit and your, and your where your money at, you know, like that's that's the only thing that I like. I thought of Vaughn, like, yeah, he shouldn't be rapping. I seen a video where you said Vaughn wasn't writing his rap. Some dude named Bloodbath was writing them. Who was Bloodbath? Oh, yeah, the guy. Now, nah, nah, look, with that, right? So it was a debate. It was a debate. You know, I was debating with some motherfuckers who I was in the county with. And they was like, man, look, a dude from St. Louis, they wrote that. They wrote, you know, some shit for Vaughn. So I'm like, nah, hell nah, bro. I'm like, nah, bro. If anybody, some, Dirk, or, you know, somebody else to write it for him, you know, who got some skills. But they like a bloodbath. And then next thing you know, like, I'm I'm on the internet now, you know. Like, this before the internet, they told me about the guy bloodbath. But he was from St. Louis? He from St. Louis. See, I didn't know that. I remember when bloodbath got killed forever ago, but I didn't know he was from St. Louis. No, nah, he ain't get killed. He in jail. Bloodbath is? Yeah. Oh, we're talking about the yeah, same guy? Blood money? Blood money yeah, is what blood I'm thinking. Money. That's, that's, that's Keith, Keith son. That's Rio. Right, right. Rest in peace to Rio. Oh, so it's a different guy. Okay. Yeah, rest in peace to Rio, man. Whoops. I'm going to leave that so in just to show my blood ignorance. Ma- so you're saying bloodbath. <laughs> how do you even know him from being from St. Lawrence? Not St. Lawrence, but... St. Louis. St. Louis. Nah, he had to bring. He had to know him in jail. All right, so he, he had to meet him in jail. So bloodbath was locked up in Chicago. Yeah, he was locked up in Chicago. He ended up catching the case and getting locked up in Chicago. And when he got locked up, he was on Division 9 with Von them. And when he was on Division 9, you know, I kind of hear it in his raps, man. I kind of hear it, bro. If you listen to Bloodbath, the way his caterings, and, like, I, I could kind of hear it. But them Vine stories, like, ain't nobody going to pay me to think. Them his stories, bro. That's why I can't, like. Vine my- shit real. Them his stories. Like, dude probably told him, like, how to cater it, like, how to put it in caterings and shit like that, how to put it in 16s and barred up. But, no, that's Vine stories. Them stories is his. And with Vaughn, actually, like, I think when he probably got out of jail, the more he was out, he probably had to start writing his own lyrics eventually, right? Yeah. 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 Because his later shit. As you start touching money and all that, seeing shit, more shit, the cars and the clothes and walking in stores and they giving you champagne and shit, you get, you start to get something to rap about and put it in words. Right. Like grandson for president, that's Vaughn. I mean, the deeper you get into the music industry, the more normal it becomes for people to help you write your lyrics, I think. I've been in the studio multiple times with legendary rappers and seen them like blatantly sitting on the couch writing lyrics with another rapper helping them out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the cheat code. They yeah. do that. Like, but if you if you tell somebody that like, bro, you wrote your rap, no, he didn't. They'll be wanting to kill you or right. The fans know, don't want to like hear that. that. They don't want to hear that. That's part of what you learn as you get deeper in the industry. Is like, yeah, you you could do this behind closed doors, but don't ever tell anybody. Yeah. And then you get big enough, and people don't even give a shit. Facts. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I wanted to ask this one that we got written down here. Oh, yeah, so why did THF Zoo call you out and call you a cloud chaser? How'd you feel when that happened? Um, I I ain't feel no type of way. I ain't feel no type of way because, you know, I said I said a couple things. Like, Lil Reese, I said something, man, like, oh, he talking about dirt. But then it was really, like, like it, it kind of showed. It kind of showed, like, yeah, something going on now because, you know, like, with Reese. It was like, who your top five, Reese? And Reese was like, da da da, da da da, da da da, number four, Sosa, and fucking number five, me. And I'm like, hold on, Lil Dirk, number one out that list. You hear me? Like, Lil Dirk gotta go in that motherfucker five. You hear me? He got right. to go in that five. He didn't went crazy. You know, but, you know, that's what make you think, like, you know, it's something, it's something off, like, you know, not to say that, you know, because even even if you hate Dirk, like even if you hate him and don't like him, you can't deny his talent. But Dirk and Reese, they were in a video together within like the last couple years, right? Yeah. But something happened after that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seemed like it. Like once you once you pay attention to the internet, like yeah. you start paying attention, and you will start seeing shit like uh, like subliminals, like they throwing subs out at each other. And, you will catch on to it. So when I catch on to it and I break it, you know, people be like, oh, man, he said he want to talk about him. That's Cap. Mm. But then, you know, Lil Reese on DJ U the other day, and somebody sent it to me, say, I don't know what nobody else saying. But he said your stories are true. But the story that Trenches News said is true. I don't know what they talking about, but mm. and, I, and I respect you, Lil Reese, because I know them. You know, it's probably a fake story because you don't want me saying it. Like Adam said, they you know – it becomes fake, but my story is real, bro. All my story is real, and I'm going to turn my stories into movies, cartoons. You know, just need a little help, man. Once I get help, bro, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to shoot off like a rocket, that's, bro. That's the best way to figure out who actually doesn't fuck with who is ask them to do, like, a top five list where the person that you know that they don't fuck with should clearly be in the list. <laughs> like, yeah. that's pretty crazy. That, that yeah, I mean, you, you kind of, like, can't help it. It's just like if you're going to do the list – you got to leave the person you don't like off the list, but then at the same time, it's like in that case, it's kind of like a glaring omission. Yeah, then especially when you be like PGF Nook and <laughs> like hell no, nah, bro. Like time out, bro. Like little dirt, bro. I wanted to throw a flag inside the, the camera. Like hell no, nah, bro. Like. But you don't actually know what the issue might be between them. Nah, they probably some small. Mm. You no, know, probably some. You know, they probably ain't got enough time for them or. You know, some it's always something gonna be something, bro. Like it always gonna be a problem, bro. When you getting money and you, you know, going to the top and doing your thing, bro, it's always gonna be a problem. But bro. it's kinda like that with Tay Savage too, where he kinda like leaves Dirk out of his conversation. And then when you ask him about it, Tay Savage will say, like, nah, I fuck with Dirk because he Muslim. But it's like I mean, there's a million other things you could say in that situation. So it kinda t lets you know, like, oh, he's saying that he like fucks with him as a human being. But doesn't really seem like he fucks with him on like a personal level. But then you have Tay Savage being so close with Lil Reese that you figure yeah, that, that yeah, might I be the root of loyalty, it. I think his loyalty just over there, period. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But one thing I do know, like I've seen everybody say, oh, Dirk can't come back over here. He can't come back over there. Da, da, da. And then he come through and he probably gave out a couple cash apps. Mm. You know, and then nobody said nothing. Hey, long live the king. You know, like shit like that. So, so you think Lam Ron uh, probably like this split right now, but you think they got a good chance to actually come back together? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shit don't not last forever, man. Don't I see. Don't last, bro. Like, so the people have a theory. They say that the reason Lam Ron is not as close to Dirk, not as close with the people, because maybe when his brother passed, his brother was more locked in with people that was on Lam Ron or 59th or something like that. No, nah, actually, shit. Dirk was with them. Like, with Reese and them, like, he was with them. You know, he probably was on other blocks, but shit, I seen him most of the times when I seen him, he was around them. You know, and then, you know, you grow. You grow, though. People don't people don't see your growth. Like, people don't see that, like, times change, so do people, too. Like, shit, times change, bro. Like, you got to get rid of people, you know, for your best interest sometimes, bro. And it might hurt. It might hurt you, but look, don't worry about that shit, bro. Like, life, bro, you got to make your decisions for your business. You know what I'm talking about? If a nigga don't like that, bro, like, they ain't, you ain't human. Because if they was in your position, they'll tell you you got to go. Mm -hmm. You know? So, what, I don't. What do you, did you know much about Tay Savage back in the day? Or 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I seen ran into him a couple of times. Ran into him, and um, he was he was young. He he really ain't had no blazing name like that at first. Like, you know, and then next thing you know, like he got shot. Welsh got killed. Some shit happened. Um, you know, and then next thing you know, shit, they like, goddamn it, Tay Savage. I'm like, who y'all talking about? Because we called them Tay. You know, everybody on low and Tay, little Tay. You know, and then Tay Savage and, you know, like that. But he a humble dude, bro. Like, he a humble dude. He don't just be starting shit. Like, I ain't never seen him just start tweaking with somebody for no reason or mm-hmm. none of that. But, you know, he humble, bro. He it's, humble. It's kind of hard to, like, square the reputation that he has as being a savage with the fact that when you do interviews with him, when you watch him in interviews or you watch him doing skits with Jay Main, he seems... Like he's on some respectful shit and that he wants to do the right thing and he wants to be successful as a rapper and he don't really got too much interest in beefing with people. You see him in interviews denying that he even knows who Kiddo is and shit like that. But you kind of wonder, like, is, is there another version of him that we're, we're not really having access to because he's smart enough to not say that shit on camera? Yeah, he just ain't going to say that. Now. He one of them people. Yeah. Like, I ain't getting you no, no type of clout. But what I can say about mentioning why you mentioned Kiddo, you know, Kiddo, like, dude, like he gon he gon he gonna get a check, bro, off the music. He gonna get a check. Somebody gonna get a give him a check, bro. He gonna get it. Cause like I like his music. Like he off. Like his music off. His music don't match. But it's it's cool. It's cold. <laughs> it it's is like, kinda wild, right? Yeah, it's yeah. wild, bro. I never <laughs> seen nobody do that. But the only thing with him, why I be on him so hard, man, I call him 051 Log Dog too. You know, that's what I call him. That's my name for him. Um he just like you did ten years, bro. Ten years. You said that none of these niggas was with you. Everybody left you. Mm-hmm. you me? Only that girl, the girl who you kissing in the video. Only her stayed with him. And then you get out, and you know you wouldn't have put your life on the line for some niggas who wasn't there with the first time. It was just her. You know yeah. that's all I be trying to get to them, bro. Like, come on, bro. Don't don't do that, bro. So you think he should just abandon 051 your money? Man, I ain't saying abandon nobody. I'm saying, man, make business decisions for your life and yourself, man, on that thing, bro. All y'all can't fit in one casket, can y'all? Nah, yeah. I mean, kiddo, I like him. I like his music. I think he's dope and everything, but you definitely, I mean, it is kind of wild to see somebody come out after eight years or ten years and to have the attitude and the perspective that he has. Because you look at Tay Savage, it's kind of the opposite, where he's not talking shit about people. He probably got all kinds of people he don't like. But Kiddo's just putting that shit on Front Street and like yeah, every you know, verse you know, letting you know fuck. exactly who he don't fuck with. And that's that's a big part of why everybody's kinda so shocked by it, right? Yeah. He can make he can make some money though, bro. He just gotta find a way to, you know, dissing and drill, bro. It's 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 fading. It's mm, fading. I don't know if you see it, bro. It's fading. Like it ain't gonna be no more drilling. I say I give it like four more years, five more years. It ain't gonna be no more drilling, bro. It's already faded. It's already faded, bro. Only thing that's keeping that shit alive is Dirk. Like Lil Dirk music. Because and it's not necessary that Lil Dirk making drill music. Like he can make a song, but just by him being from Chicago, it's just labeled drill. Cause like I listened to the new Dirk album a bunch of times. And like for me, I always start skipping the R and B ass songs after a couple of times listening to the album. And then when you really look at that Dirk album, it's really only like maybe like four songs that you would look at as like hardcore drill-ish songs or whatever. He's doing a lot of, like, fly shit, a lot of, you know, songs for girls, a lot of shit that's more emotional and stuff. But at the same time, people are always going to put him in that drill category yeah, regardless. Yeah. yeah, and then he'll come out. But, like, for him, like, you know, you got a voice, man. Like, when you get a voice like he got, bro, like, and it's the Lil Dirk. I know you'll see this one. If you don't see nothing else, you'll see this one, man. Use your voice, man, to... Help your city, bro. Like, help everybody. Like, not just one side. Help all everybody. You might can't get them all money, but, you know, like, you have a voice to to just help, bro. Like, you got you, you got a real voice, bro. Like, for real. Like, my kids, they like little dog. be like, cut that off. They, oh, we ain't cutting this off. They listen to that shit. My daughter, you can't tell her cut off no little dirt. Mm. Like, she going to listen to that shit regardless, no matter what it's saying. So do you consider Dirk a op, or you just want your kids to cut it off because you don't want them listening to drill music? No, nah, like if they listen to the songs about Dirk, well, he, you know what I'm talking about, he, the, the J. Ta- Cole ta- shit. Ta- time about my, no, nah, the J. Cole shit dope. I'm just tired of hearing it now because 
Like they playing in the airport <laughs> yeah, right? on the every everywhere you go, bro. Like they playing that shit. You know, it's if it wasn't like, for that song, like my kid is almost three and she knows Lil Dark and she will point out in videos to say, Lil Dark, look at it. Like yeah. like there, just because of that song. If it wasn't for that song, I don't think she would know him like that. Well, he, he definitely he definitely got a, a big voice and you know, time to time to talk to the youth, man. Like for real. Like the shit over with, like the the wars, the 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 fuck, all that shit. Everybody dead, bro. Mm. Like at this point, motherfuckers just getting buried just to be buried, bro. Like everybody who was in the game, look at look at everybody who was in the game of drill. Go to the drill and take a picture, man. Everybody gone from that drill. You got a a, a splack of people that's still around, bro. That's why Kiddo and and Tay Savage seem so crazy because they're like ghosts. They're like dudes that like are from that prior generation. You didn't really know them then, but like you know them now, and it's like they they got locked up long enough that they were able to survive that time period. And like, but then I mean, you do have somebody like PGF Nook coming out, and he got that energy of uh, you know, the the old Chicago or whatever. But then he also just got locked up, and yeah, you know. it's faded off though. Mm-hmm. Like it's only so much of, you know that. I mean, his "What Up" song that's gonna always be like a song that he gonna be performing, right? You know, but far as like all his catalog and shit, like nah, I don't think so. You know, it's like it's fading off. Mm. It's fading off. Man. And then he catches this case where you really might not see him for eight years or ten years or whatever it might be. Then he ain't got no record though. Yeah. So he might get probation. Yeah, he yeah. ain't got no record. But the switch is crazy, right? Like they man, they go hard why on that you shit. You ain't going to get your fucking license. You <laughs> hear me? Like that's crazy. Like you ain't got no background. You brag on live. I ain't never been to jail. You know, go and get your fucking license. You can carry a gun. But still having the switch is a little bit. No, but they, you know, that's the extra shit that they want. Everybody got to have a button because you got a button. He got a button. I want a button. Man, look, you can have a button and I got a 9mm. If I shoot that motherfucker off and hit you, I can kill you just as fast as you got that switch. You hear me? Like, the switch going to go like this anyway. It's people 50 pounds doing doing (laughs) this, running down the block. That's why they shooting in cribs three blocks away, killing people. And shit like that. Little babies getting hit and all type of shit, bro. Because of that little button, bro, that everybody won't. But don't nobody know how to control it. Mm. You know? Do you, um, where do you stay at these days? You don't have to say. But are you out the way or are you still in the mix? Oh, man. Hey, shit. Hopefully after no jumper, man, I ain't going to need a lot, man. Hopefully God just, man, get me out the way, man. That's the goal. Yeah, that's the that's the big goal, man. But you got to move around way different now because you, you're high profile. I mean, I guess when the mask comes off, though, you're not that high profile, man, but mask, a lot of people know, right? Mask come off, man. I, I walk past people, man, all the time, man. I get people be like, that trench news? Man, that look like trench news. There's, there's pictures of you with, like, dreads. Is that you? Like, there's yeah, like, oh, dreads, also, that is you I in the dreads, picture. Yeah. Oh, what I happened? Dreads. I had cut them off. I I actually cut my dreads off, man, and had and didn't even have one, bro. Mm. Cut my dreads off. They said I had a one. Grandma talking about um, U.S. Marshals came and all that shit. Cut my dreads off, man. They took me to the police station to let me go, man. I was like, God damn. They could take your dreads just just during that brief nah, period. I cut my dreads, you know. When they say they looking for you, people say they riding around with your picture. Yeah. You know, so you oh, like fuck okay, that. Okay. Try to, you know, try to get a couple extra days. That's how. That's you, how you're gonna get out of that. Do you believe that Tay Savage and Jay Main could like help usher in a new era of of peace in the rack, or you don't buy it? Man, I ain't gonna need a lot to you, man. Hey, look, I like. Uh, shout out to Jay Main, what he doing? No bullshit. Shout out to him. Shout out to Tay Savage, what he doing? You know, but it's gonna it's gonna have to be some people who was in that who was in that shit. Like who was main and that shit, like, mm. and them come together, bro. And once they see them together, you know, then it'll happen. But like, like who the fuck is like Tay respected on the blocks? But like, who is he? Like to tell us that we gonna stop warring for my homies and them that his blocks and them way over there. Mm. You hear me? Like you, you like ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. Like it gotta be some people like, like people say Ruga and Memo ain't no good thing, but actually it is. Ruga brother was locked up for memo brother murder. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Scrap was locked up for listy murder. So if you can get them two together and they can, you know what I'm talking about, make it where, you know, man, I see you, I respect you. You hear me? I ain't got nothing against you. You know, if I see you in Cali or if I see you in wherever they at, wherever I see you at, you good. You know, you got the kids way to y'all that we ain't got to be in. We ain't got to kick it with each other, but we ain't enemies. If they mm-hmm. could get it like that, bro, that, that'll help Chicago. Like, yeah, it could happen, bro. 
I know we got dead people that's involved with this shit, but I mean, I don't want to go down there with them. Like, what the fuck? Like, we gonna kill each other to one of us down there with them? Like, hell no. Nah, so that's you, backwards. You knew scrap. Yeah, and I Scott, seen a, I seen a video where you said yeah. you stopped scrap from like pulling the gun out on butter and chaos. Oh uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I love scrap, man. Like when I was around, like when I was around them. Let me get this clear too. When I was around them, bro, like. Around them, like, Doug and them, they was 18, 19, like, when the drill started. Doug and them was grown. Like, they was grown, bro. You know, I got a lot of people, you know, little haters and shit. They be like, oh, he was grown and he was around Doug and them. No, nah, man, Doug and them was grown. 18 years old, they grown. And I wasn't with Doug. I was with Brick, you know, his older brother. But, you know, Doug was around. You know, you're going to come around your sibling and try to smoke up the weed or whatever we got going on. So, you know, I was around them. And like KI and them, all them, but I, I, it's different crowds on the block. Like it could be five different crowds, but you're around everybody. But that ain't the people who you hanging with every day. Mm. You know, so I was just. Cause Scrap died at like 14 or 15, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, Lil Steve died at 14. Scrap died at. I yop, around 15, 14, 15, yop, too. Yop, yop. So you knew Lil Steve too, or no? Nah? No, nah, I ain't know Lil Steve, but Scrap was like. Like, Scrap was, like, um, a basketball player, bro. Like, he, he was a star, bro. He was a star. Never seen his potential. Never get to see his potential, bro. He was a star. Like, for real, bro. An NBA star, bro. Like, I'm seeing him at his age drop 30 on people. Mm-hmm. Drop 30 on grown men at the YMCA, shit like that, on the, on the basketball court, at Hayes basketball court. Like, I'm seeing this shit. So you used to live with Duck? You said that you had an apartment oh, yeah. with Duck at. Like, how did that come about? Yeah, yeah, I live, I live with Duck. Me and Duck live together, man. We stayed with um G Daisky, Boss Crazy. They rap, um, he rap. We stayed with their mama. They had a crib, and you know she, they from the low end. So you know when they was on roads, they was from the low end. You know everywhere I be, like people be like, how is he over here and over there? If somebody from the, it's ninety nine point nine percent of the chance that somebody from the low end lived over there. And that's how I got in over there. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you bring a guy out of town, out of town, and then you show him the game of Cali, and then he brings some old motherfuckers in. Before you know it, now you got Chicago and Cali mm. on one of these blocks. You know, like, not saying it like that, but, like, yeah. that situation. So, yeah. Definitely. You and Doug had to be kind of tight if y'all was living together. And stuff, oh, yeah, right? me and Doug was tight, bro. Me and Doug was real tight, like, throwing water on each other, going to every studio session. Most of them songs that y'all hear today, like, I was in the studio for him. For them, like most of these old songs, like from 12, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, like the hits, like the shit that was making them buzz, like I, I was there in the studio with them. Like for real, I was getting them on the radio, shit like that. So, what uh, what do you think uh, like O Block J Hood is kind of doing like what J Main's doing, but from a different perspective where he's talking about religion and trying to push peace and stuff, whereas Jay Main's coming at it from a comedy perspective. You're coming at it in terms of all, these are all people who are making it as YouTubers. You coming at it from just, you know, documenting the news and also speaking on your experience and stuff. Uh, did you know Jay Hood back in the day or anything? No, nah, I didn't know him. I didn't know Jay Hood. Um, and then he had to be young when I was in there. So he had to, he would have had to be young when I was in there because, like, he 10 years old. I mean, I'd be... Like nine years, eight years old than him, so I don't remember him like being in a like as he grew older. 2012 when the shit was going on, mm-hmm. stuff probably like he came outside or something like that. But I ain't know him. But I respect what he's doing with his changing his life though, because yeah. you can't you can't you can't um like a part of gang leadership, bro. Like if you want out, you can get out, bro. Like people should embrace that shit. Like don't nobody want to be part of no flunky shit or going to jail for no motherfuckers. Or, like, people should embrace that shit, bro. Like, like dropping your flag or... Yeah, dropping your flags yeah. and all that shit. People laugh, bro. Like, dog, nah, bro. Like, drop that shit, bro. Ain't nobody gonna help you do nothing but carry your casket. They ain't gonna... The soon you're dead, they're gonna be fucking your baby mama or hollering <laughs> at her. Time about some... If you need anything after yeah. the front, if you need anything, hit my line. Then when she hit your line and tell you some real shit, like she needs some cases of pampers and shit like that, you bring them over, but you got your dick out. You hear me? Like, I ain't gonna die for no niggas like that. Mm-hmm. On that thing, you trying to holler at my, my motherfucking wife and all that shit. You been signed now while I was here. 
You hear me? Like, hell nah, I ain't gonna die for no niggas like them. So some people on O Block you know and like so Jay Hood, you said you never seen nah, him? Nah. I ain't not, nah. So I don't know him. Kenny Mac from O Block? Which which Kenny Mac? It's like uh the Kenny his name's Kenny Mac. Was he a part of the like O Block Five? Or? Oh no, nah, he he's from Dipset. He was my celly. That's what I seen. Y'all was locked up together. Yeah, he was my celly. So what's his relationship to O Block? Um, none. I was surprised that he was even over there, bro. Like I, I was blindsided when I seen him in the, um, when they read him because he been in jail. He was locked up already. Like he got locked away before now. So I wanted to mention this because when we were talking about the peace thing, it's it was kind of crazy to see Yella make it clear that he was down to squash shit with Six Hundred Breezy, and the Six Hundred Breezy basically said, "Fuck you, you're a goofy. I don't want nothing to do with you." Which is like kind of not that surprising that like that's that's like one of the the risk that comes up with somebody trying to make peace is that the other side might just use it as an opportunity to be like, just basically stun on you. See, but no, it ain't even like that. It's like with 600 Breeze and them, it's like, why am I making peace with you? Mm. We, ain't, we ain't even ops. Like, I ain't even your op. You know, if you look at it like that, like, that's when you just said, that's how I look at it. Like, that ain't even his op, but, you know, none of that. You know, but, like, I understand, I understand what, I understand from both angles. Like, everybody ain't going to go on no peace. And if he say he don't want a peace with you, that don't mean you going on no rant and say you be out the seat, and that's the reason why he didn't do it. Mm. You hear me? Because people going on rants after that. Like, a lot of people, they be broke, they ask me for interviews. I don't do no interview with them, then they make a story about me. Mm. You know, sort of like that type of shit. So, you know. Definitely. Um... Okay, when we're talking about people dropping their flag, though, how you feel about Butter deciding he don't want to be FBG Butter anymore? Butter should have been been did that anyway. Really? It's like, it's like, um, you ain't like. First of all, Butter is like FBG. Like he, like I mean, if you want, if you want to say like he ain't no rapper, no, he ain't the rapper FBG. But Fives, they movement, Fives whooping ass and getting scratches and he, the man the been shot four motherfucking times. Like, how dare you, you know? But ask the motherfuckers who saying it, how, they, how many times how they got shot. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? It, in the last, and they, you gonna see that Butter then got more sky wounds and he damn near died when shit got real. You hear me? Like, ask them when they got shot. Oh, I got shot in my leg. Or, you know, some you shit like, like that. Dutchie and Young? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't see no, I don't see why, like, like anybody got a problem for him want to change like first of all butter got butter got like four kids five kids um his baby mama died she got kids you know what i'm saying she she died and he got the kids by herself and then he got a duck sister baby mama but they got their own kids you know so he got a daughter that that ain't got no mama you know so he he he's supposed to be that for her. and then like you got an avenue of youtube to to pay your bills and help you take care of your your family, like do yes. How you get so locked in with J Pay? Cause I know J Pay managed you and Butter. Or yeah, where J Pay from? J Pay, um, J Pay actually from Memphis, and um, I had met J Pay when I first started. Like he was like one of the first people that I knew before YouTube. Like me and him had some shit going on. Me and him had like he was supposed to help me, you know, bring bring it to life. Like my shit, like. On some movie shit, cause that's how I came to him. Like, bro, you know, I, you know about cameras, bro. If you could help me get cameras and shit, like, help me do that or help me put it into it, bro. I got million dollar ideas and shit. And so, you know, he started helping me share my page and do shit like that. And then, you know, he helped me take off with it too. He helped me take off, like. So it was more so like an online relationship, and then y'all. Yeah, y'all um, online relationship, but you know, it was like, like family, cause I can call him and he called me like, Jay, let me hold something. You know, when I first started YouTube. And then, you know, when I got it, he called me. I get it sent to him, you know, because now I got it. So, uh, Another person that I want to mention, too, uh, TYMB Feifei. I always see him always, like, he always got something to say about you. Yeah, uh, Feifei, you know, I really ain't had no problem with Feifei. I don't know him. All I was telling Feifei is, bro, just be a civilian. You can be a civilian. You can talk about whatever you want to. I always hear Adam say one thing, like, people be – trying to hush Adam up when Adam be speaking his truth about, like, certain shit, like the dude who was supposed to threaten Adam, and you spoke on that shit. I was watching you, and some dude spoke, and Adam saying it. 
he should never threaten him if he ain't want to say it. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you don't put it out there and then think I ain't going to speak on it or something. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you got to respect that. And I respected that out of him, though. Like, yeah, you got you to gotta let a motherfucker know sometimes, man, what it is <laughs> and what it ain't going to be for real. Man, I appreciate that for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, one of the, the biggest stories involving your name that has come out is that everybody's been treating it like gospel that you are cooperating on this whole uh, FBG Duck murder case. Yeah. How did that even become a narrative, and, and what are your thoughts on this? Um, it became a narrative because I was talking to Butter online, playing with Butter like, yeah, ooh, ooh. Some, me and Butter was playing and shit. We was talking. Uh, he got on my page, and I was like, "Butter man, be a fucking civilian. Woo, woo. Mm. Fuck them. You know, shit like that. And um, I had ended up getting grabbed, though, by them. And I said that, and then everybody just, you know, ran with it. Ran with it and, you know, it made multiple stories, you know, make stories every day, dragging on, you know, shit like that. So I just figured, like, shit, I finna drop my book anyway, you know, and shit, ride it. Because you could have kind of, like, cleaned it up a little bit earlier than you did, right? If you had really wanted to stop the rumor. No, I I, I got on that. My boy, C-Hood. Hey, can you come in here? Sure. Hey, C-Hood. We we're going to need to put another mic in if he wants to Check it out, my boy. Yet. But they could probably just... Yeah, I mean, the mic's right there. So they could just jam it in there if they wanted. Yeah, so, like, all right, so I know you've been seeing everyone thinks you're Cooperator 1 or whatever. But why are they saying Cooperator 1 so specifically? Because of, like... He's from Newtown, and he was in O Block in 2000. You match up with the description? Um, well, I, I was I wasn't I was locked up, and you could pull up my shit in 2006. 2006, I was in the county Cook County Jail uh -huh. waiting for boot camp, and in 07, I went to boot camp. You know, so I wasn't in uh then, but you know, once they start saying it, you know, like multiple people grab it, you you can't control it. Yeah, you 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 really can't control the internet. You hear me like, you just can't say nothing in there. Oh, you already said it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just, hey, going by my book, attach my <laughs> book link to it. You know, going by Chicago Drill, you're going to get more out of my book than you're going to get out of anybody content on YouTube, bro. Like, my book, The Truth, bro. Like, you want to set it up? It, it's yeah, The Truth. Just, just and, go for it. You know, so I just like, run, <laughs> run with it. Run <laughs> with it. Do what you want to do with it. You hear me? Yeah. Like, duck my homie, though. You know, that's my real homie. Like, that's my real fucking homie. Over them guys, them, them, like, over them, Doug, my real homie. You know, it was just Kenny Michael Johnson was my celly. He was my celly. You know what I'm saying? And he was involved with that. And then, you know, if you you come home and you like, what up, big bro? Woo, woo. You texting a nigga. He texting you. You know, shit like that. And then after Doug died, you know, my fuck still texting. But then you you get grabbed and shit. And, yo, and now I look like, oh, hold on. He be saying, talking about Duck, right? You know, I, I'm always, shout out Duck. That's my boy. You know what I'm talking about? So it could look like a picture of a thousand words could mean anything. It could mean like, oh, did you backdoor him or did you, you know, anything. So right. I, I wouldn't want nobody to think that definitely not that. His family or none of that because I'm close to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't think, no, nah, I did anything. So that it was rumors that people was thinking like that? You had to clear it up to them? Like, it wasn't no backdoor? Oh, yeah. It was like, shit. Man, yeah, it's it's, it's it's a it's a lot of rumors that's going on and being said and, and thought about. Everybody got opening their mouth with something to say. Yeah, it's um, just new. So when you, you know, said, putting their input. When you just it, it like, if if I keep on responding to it, you hear me? Like, it, it's gonna oh, blah, blah. they take my story and pick through it and oh uh, man, I mean they try to pick through it, but they oh he said this like I I flipped through shit, man. He said that I ain't never say nothing. That nigga said I robbed my grandma. You hear me like I, I, I mean it's like I was telling them it's, it's content man you do what you do they it, it's karma they gonna get theirs on you yeah. just like you do yours man yeah so they all right so you do you do admit that they did the FBI did bring you down to them oh yeah them? yeah 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 I called my boy straight up I then, called them ASAP and then you did identify Muwap and someone else Kenny Mac to them no nah, they knew already that I knew him I mean they got the text. Yeah, yeah. That's why they grabbed me. Nah, because King AK-47 said that you told him that you got picked up and that you did identify Muwap and Kenny Mac to the FBI. Nah, nah, nah. They asked me. They asked. If it's involved in the case, they going to ask you. 
Mm-hmm. You hear me? They gonna ask you. They not just gonna bring you in here and be like, oh man, what's up with you and him? If he a part of them, bro, like they know, I already know I know them. If I say, okay, so if I say, oh man, no, I don't know them. I don't know Los. But if they going to pull up a thing just like they pull up the chart sheet, oh, I glue guy joint a lie. Pulled up the sale number and everything that me and Kenny Mack was in. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. Like in Cook County Jail from 14. This 2014. So why well, I look like saying, oh, yeah, I don't know you. But is that them at the crime scene of a murder or something like that? No. You know? So as you basically admit that you did, like, identify Muwap and Kenny Mack, but as far as telling anything else, you know No, really it's like, no, it ain't. It's like, like, if they say, oh, man, they show me a picture of C. Hood. Do you know him? No, I don't know him. But he on my podcast or he in pits or anything. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck would I not say I don't know him for? Like, so you know Kenny Mack? You knew Muwap too? No, I don't. I don't know him. Like, I know him from the videos or like yeah. shit like that. I don't know him. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know him. You know? Why would I, they ask you about I know. I know Kenny Mack though. Like, I know him. I was in the cell with him. He held, he rolled with me. You know, it's in my book though. I ain't gonna give up a lot of that shit, but it's in my book about the, you know what I'm talking about when I got into it for about Duck Nim. And this one, he wasn't known no size or none of that. Like, I don't know him from old block. I never known he was. You know, in that shit, bro. He's from another block. He's from 72nd and Emerald, bro. Yeah, do your homework and see how far that is from from what Doug them from St. Lawrence, bro. So Kenny Kenny Mack was a part of the the old block five that was picked up. So why is his name even getting brought up? Like, where did he fit in all this? For the people who don't know. What you mean? You know, he, Kenny, he, part, he part of the old block five. Yeah, exactly. But he's yeah. not from old block, so that's where everyone's like, how did he get involved? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know how he started hanging over there. That's what I'm saying. Don't nobody know. Don't mm-hmm. nobody know that, bro. Like, until they showed them on the, you know, on the thing, bro, nobody knew. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knew, bro, until, like, it when it came out. Like, nobody knew. Like, they was caught the first day. They came out with Lowe's audio, like, the next day. I mean, like, the, I mean, like, the card description. Somebody pulled the audio file. I think his name on uh, the duck case or some shit. He pulled a duck audio file and I mean the 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 car audio and mm-hmm. when it to Carlos offered. We knew that the first three days when it was they was wrapped. You hear me? So I mean if whatever a person wanna say, bro, like you expected me to go in there and be like, oh no, I don't know him. I don't know nothing of them now. Right. That. I mean, you a goofy, bro. Like they ain't the same people like we talking about as in C P D or not or none of that shit, bro. Like they not if they come see you, bro, they not finna they, they know, you know what I'm talking about, 9 out of 10, they ain't just show up at your fucking door, you know, Merry Christmas, you know, so, with, like, like when I said, you know, like, it, it just is what it is, bro, like. So that's, I guess that's what a lot of people confused about, like, why do they come snatch you up to make you talk about it, like, what's your involvement, not saying you involved, but like, why nah, you. I had text messages with them, bro, this is my, we was texting, bro. Like, we was texting, even after, what's the name, even after Doug got killed, we was texting. You and Kenny Mack? Yeah, we was texting, bro. Yeah. Like, we was texting the the whole time. But this was my celly. Like, this is my celly. This is the person who I ain't knowing that he with, he fucked with them or none of that. Like, not in a million years, bro. Like, we never once talked about over there. Like, him being over there, hanging over there. Like, that type of shit, bro. Like, we talked about a lot of shit that they got, but we ain't talk about none of that. Like, he never told me he hanging with them. He just hit me up. It was like the last thing was like, damn, that guy hit up. Keep your head up. Or you let them get him. Keep your head up. You know, shit like that. You know, and it takes a lot of whole bunch of more motherfuckers. You know, mm-hmm. like, I'm, we on duck. We doing this. You know, if you expect them, they can't, what, you expect them to do the same thing? The motherfucker, like, say, say, like, with, with, with that. Like, oh, we on Kenny Mac. He texting them back and forth. Like, how can you, how can you get up out of that? Conspiracy? You hear me? Like, yeah. now you involved with a conspiracy. You texting back and forth. Why is they going to the scene? All type of shit. You hear me? Like, you know, I ain't going to be part of nothing. I, I didn't build I didn't build shit. You hear me? Like, I didn't build shit. I got shit to lose. You know what I'm talking about? So I really don't give a fuck what the end of that time about. Like, that. that's how I'm That's how I'm coming, Remo. Like, for real. Yeah, like, yeah. I got shit to lose, bro. I ain't no gang member. I ain't, since I've been on YouTube, you never heard me say none of that in the gang gang or none of that, bro. Like, for real. I, I speak up for the youth. Uh, um, you know, try my best to get them the best game about, you know, I'm talking about like building credit and your life insurance and, you know, shit like that, bro. Like, I ain't, what the fuck I'm going to stand on? What for who? 
Cause they, it's rumors they were saying that like, you got paid to do it, to pay this. Thing. I know I, you seen I, people say I, that. Too. I mean, I mean, I just seen, the, I just seen a whole bunch of shit. You hear me? But like I said, bro, like when I when I had got grabbed up, when they spent on me, you hear me? Mm -hmm. That's what it. That's what it's about. And it was like, you know, what I'm saying you could be part of this shit, or you can, you know, what I'm talking about like, no, nah, I ain't gonna, I ain't part of nothing. You hear me? Like that's what I'm telling you. Like I ain't yeah. part of nothing, bro. Like what am I standing on? You know what I'm talking about? Like, what What the fuck am I standing on? Like, for real. Y'all ain't got shit. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck I'm going to stand on? What the fuck I'm going to ball up and play crazy and then be taken away from my kids for? You hear me? Like, come on, bro. Like, like that's common sense, bro. Like, I, I build shit. Like, I build shit off YouTube. You hear me? Like, for real, I can show you analytics, bro. Like, 12s, 8s, 12s, 8s, 12s, 8s. I build shit, bro. I wear Levi's. You hear me? I don't wear expensive shit. I wear Levi's. You know what I'm talking about? Like, shit like that, bro. Like, I, I be into, like, never going broke, never starving again. Like, shit like that, bro. Like, I found my glitch. You know what I'm talking about? And, and that's what I'm going to do with it. You the know? glitch. Yeah, that's I'm a good talking, way to put it. Yeah, I found my glitch, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm going I'm to keep my glitch. You know, I ain't, bro, a million people could think something. I'm going to protect myself at all times. Like, you can, you can think because I got on a mask or, you know, something like that. Just don't forget that I came from the streets. You know, yeah. that that's just my message. Just don't forget I came from the streets. Like, like I I'm I'm gonna protect myself. I ain't out no that killing nobody or none of that. But if you try to harm me or anything, cause ninety nine percent of the people who talking on the internet, I don't even know them or you know what I'm talking about, they just talking, bro. Like they they just talking and it don't it don't bother me. It don't pay my kids, you know, they bills and you know shit that I got going on. So So you wanna give us an introduction? Oh uh, yeah, this is my boy C Hood, man. What's this is my word? boy. What's I, the word? What's the word? I holler him out in every every video. If you go back, every video he in uh, that you could check. You know, this is my boy. And when I was broke on 63rd, this who the fuck who helped me. You know what I'm talking about? This who helped the D Roses and the E Days and uh, you know what I'm talking about? This who helped them. You know what I'm talking about? Get off bullshit, bro. Put some money in your pocket. Mm. Everybody told him I was gonna rob him when they first when when I, when I first met him. Everybody was telling him that shit. I was just trying to get some weed from the hustle though. But when he asked me like, bro, motherfucker, be telling me, man, you on some rob and shit. And I'm like, nah, bro, I'm just trying to eat. You hear me? And shit, I got to eat in there since I started fucking with him. Mm. And this before YouTube, this when we was in Parkway, when we was on King Drive, he GD too. You know what I'm talking about? He was, he was GD. <laughs> You know, he was GD, I was BD, and we was hanging together. And you couldn't do, you couldn't tell me that you was gonna do nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, oh man, he a GD though. That don't mean shit. You hear me? Like, he feed me. He feed my kids, bro. I, that's the reason I could bat him shit. You know, he helped feed me. So I always love him, man. And I always shot him out. And when I made no jumper, I said that I gotta bring my brother on here. You know what I'm talking about? Cause we did it. What do the streets need to know about? Trenches News. Oh, man. AKA they be, Swiper. They be saying uh, a lot of his stories cap, man, but the shit be, it be adding up. Need to know shit. You can believe uh, half of that shit if you want to or, ha or, or if you don't. But keep it in mind, man. He ain't saying it for no reason. Mm. You got any stories about him or you guys, anything you guys been through together? Uh, yeah, the story he just mentioned upon when that uh, he was coming around Ed, all day, right? Everybody out there, they looking like, man, who who was dude? They, oh, man, they call me. Hey, hood, don't mess with dude, man. He the stick-up man. I'm seeing him and shit. He coming around. I'm, I I don't know what's going on, though. He just, you know, approaching the scene. And I holler at him, and then I see he trying to get some money, man. So I start rocking and rolling with him. All my encounters ain't never. I ain't never had no negative, positive. It it were well, equal to positives when I was rocking with him. Mm. So, definitely. Yeah. He mentioned D Rose, so you was around D Rose and all them too. Yeah, D Rose, uh, E Day, uh, FBG, uh, man, I'm Crumps, rest in peace to Crumps, Duck. I know all them guys too as well. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Know all of them, like best of both worlds, like. Been on both sides with him, bro. Like, watch them grow. He know them as, like, people think uh, everybody evil. I want to say this, too. Me and. Free D-Rose, man. D-Rose is innocent. 
I'm tired of motherfuckers laughing and all that shit, bro. Like, knock it off, bro. He ain't killed. He ain't killed Venzel. Rest in peace of Venzel. I went to his his funeral, his wake before the funeral. You know what I'm talking about? Day before the funeral, I went to to see his view on his body, the view on the body in a funeral home. And um, D Rose is innocent, man. And like, I'm trying to help with the innocent project. Me and my wife, my wife actually talking to the innocent project people and getting it situated. You know, so hopefully he could try to come home, man. Cause he innocent. I don't know what else he did in the streets, but I know he ain't killed Vinzel for a fact, like for real. Mm. And so I'm I'm willing to put myself on line to get him out of jail, bro. Cause you know I didn't heard people laugh for years since he been gone. Like, ha ha, he ain't even doing it. He in jail, you know, like that type of shit, bro. Them the ones you gotta really worry about in the, in, in a lifetime. Mm. If they do that shit to him, you know, do it to somebody else. But I just pray that they let him out and he turn his life around, man. Definitely. Is it true you got a white wife? Yep. How's that happen? Um, and my wife bad, man. I, I don't know what they be saying, man. They be, Adam, I'm just going to show you, man. Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> I just got to show you, Adam, man. <laughs> no, my wife pretty, man. I, I just feel like you, like a lot of these stories you're telling us shit, I'm not imagining you being around a lot of white people, although you did say that early on in your life you were around a lot of white people, right? Yeah, man. I got white friends, man. What's Man. your current uh, relationship like with Butter? Because Butter one of the ones that say that you got a white wife. Yeah, I don't said. think I would know that oh. if it wasn't for him. Oh, see. And he said niggas got your location as of now. So, like, he was basically trying to, like, threaten you a little bit on the internet. No, nah, man. Actually, I know about a whole family. His mom, his dad, you know, his grandma. I know about a whole family. So, you know, it ain't no, that's internet shit. And Butter don't know my wife. If I got on the mask, you think they know my wife? You know, they, they know she white because they hear they hear on YouTube or they see her on YouTube laughing or something. Well, they don't see her, but they hear her. But, yeah, they know my wife white, but, yeah, my wife far from what they talking about. Like, for real, she business-minded. Um, she chased the bag. She don't be chasing all that other shit. Like, she don't care about nothing on the Internet at the end of the day. Like, she still love me, and, you know, and we still going to eat, and we still going to do what we got to do. You know, like, that's how she is. And I love her, man. Hell yeah. What's your uh, current relationship like with Mama Duck? Like, did you have to clear up any backdoor rumors to her or y'all speak any? Oh, uh, yeah. I, you know, Mama Duck get the firsthand information. You know, they gonna, they got to tell her first. You know, so, you know, she, um, you know, I, I I wouldn't want her to think that, you know. And then she know I love Duck, man. Like, she, Sheena done been over there. Me and Duck waking up. We outside all night. On the, we on the couch. One of them dividers, one of them long guys that wrap around the whole crib. He on one side of that motherfucker, I'm on the other side. We both got a cup holder, one of them joints. You hear me? Like, that's how far we go back. We go back to that shit. And, you know, I just, um, I just know that, I know Mama Duck don't believe that shit, but once it gets to the internet, like, oh, he back the old duck. And then they find a little something where they think they got something, and then they send it to her. You know, that's the only thing, you know, do she believe it or not. But Mama Duck don't believe that shit, bro. So you haven't talked to her? Yeah, I talked to oh, her. Yeah, I talked yeah, to, yeah, talk to Mama Duck. Mama no, I'm Duck. saying, like, as of recently, because, like, you went missing on the internet for, like, the last couple of days, and everybody, like, where Trench is at? Hey, no, you know you know what it is, man? Like, I'm working on an audio book. Like, I be having other shit. I, I be chasing the paper. I know YouTube, easy. I could come out and drop three videos, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. And you know what I'm talking about? Like, it, it's, it's like, easy, bro. Like, it's e it's real easy, bro. So I try to focus on something else. Like, I got my audio. Then I got stores and shit, too. So, you know, like, I got clothing stores, barbershop, party bus. So you invested in all this Hell stuff? Hell yeah, bro. I was buying that shit. You know really? what I'm talking about? It was, it was coming. Motherfucker said two party buses, 6,500. Right now, shit, I jumped on it. Wow. You know, like, you, you do shit like that. That's um, dope. So you're not trying to leave Chicago. You're 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 still settled in regardless. You're gonna stay in the area because you. Oh you no, nah, got... hell no, nah. fuck no. Nah. I'm out of that motherfucking hell no. Nah. <laughs> I'm I'm out of Chicago, but I go back. Right. Like I walk around. I don't worry about nobody. I don't like. But you would stay in the sit in the state, or would you? Yeah, want... I moved out the state now. Oh, you have. Yeah, I, yeah, but I'm still in there every day. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. You know, I'm still in it every day. Like I go live walking downtown Michigan Avenue. Uh, anywhere, I, anywhere I feel like it. Like I didn't took them on the journey of all the blocks where all the dead people at on my mm. page. I done went to every spot by myself, no security, well, man. I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't, I don't play that. Like I don't. If I come over here, I'm coming for content. Like I don't give a fuck what you talking about, what's on the internet or what I said. 
it just think about what I said and it'll add up to, you know, what I'm talking about what I was talking about. Cause I only talk about like the kids and the, you know, concerned about the kids, the women and the older people, the innocent people, civilians. Mm-hmm. Like them the only ones I'm concerned about on, on this YouTube shit or off the YouTube shit. Like that's why I speak for a person who don't have a voice, you know. And a lot of people be mad, but I don't give a fuck. Like I said, as long as that check don't stop. I'm for cool. Sure. Um, all right. That was that was two hours, over two hours. You got anything else that we want to touch on before we uh wrap this up? Anything else is important that you want to highlight? Um What else I wanna highlight? Y'all got some questions? The book. Oh yeah, my book. Tap in about the book. Yeah, the book. I the gotta book, read the book. Adam. The book. You gotta read them, Adam Man. It's called How I Survive Chicago Drill. And man, it's like the dopest book that you you will get, man. It's like when you say urban novel, like when you know when you hear me talking, like right now, and you read the book, it's just gonna be that same way. And you're gonna get that feel that you're gonna be like, damn, he was really like he really went through it, bro, and mm. came up, bro, like through adversity, bro. Oh yeah, I, I just remembered that I wanted to ask this question way earlier. But so, academics took a ton of shit back in the day for doing the war in Chirac, and now I think it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Okay, there's the book, How I Survived Chicago Drill. It's kind of crazy because it's like now we have a lot of people like you who are really from that environment. You know, he was always an outsider reporting on it. And, like, you know, if anything, you guys are being even more detailed and in-depth and having more life experience in this shit. How did you look at academics back in the day uh, as a content creator? Like, were you even aware of them back in the early days? I ain't going to even lie, bro. Like, I I like academics. Like, if I took something out of somebody's book, like, get this shit. Get this paper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I learned from academics. Get your paper, bro. Like, either you going to tell the story or another motherfucker going to come along and grab the story and tell it, you know? And, um, like, a lot of people be like, oh, academics started it. No, nah, academics ain't started, man. He 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 gave them labels and shit like that, but he ain't started, bro. Like, the shit been in the air off the porch. Motherfuckers didn't die. He not even from Chicago to start something. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if you start something off calling the motherfucker the Wolverine and, you know, the devil and Lucifer, <laughs> like, you a dumb motherfucker anyway for letting the motherfucker send you off like that. So, you know, Yeah. Nah, for real. Yeah. Before we end it, we just, because I already know people going to be in the comments, so just to clear it up or confirm it or not, so with the cooperator one shit, you don't want to just, nah, I'm not cooperator one, because you know that's the main thing everybody hey, going to be looking hey, for you to talk about. Hey, I'm saying, it, I'm saying it like this, man, on that thing. Go and read that book, man. Go and get that High Survival Chicago Drill book, man. Go and get it. You will understand me, man. You will understand my whole life, my whole world, and you will know that, like, a lot of shit is chess, bro. Not checkers out here, bro, on that thing. And shout out to Charles the White, too. And all my moderators, all my moderators, NC, that BZ, uh, Made Media Magazine, Ray Duck. Shout out to all them. Orms, uh, Queen Lotus. Shout out to everybody, all them, man. If I forgot to say your name, then I forget. I, I ain't mean to. But you know what I'm saying? Like, just always remember that, bro. Like, I, I learned from everybody, bro. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. Like, I went to school, bro. And, you know, that that's to a that's to a motherfucker in elementary school, bro. Like like I'm I'm shooting for the stars, bro. Like for real, I'm I'm trying to take my family out this shit, bro. They can have a name in the street or whatever they want in the street. They can have that shit, bro. I fold to all that shit. I've been folded to that when I got when I was in that wheelchair. Yeah. You know they can have all that street shit, bro. Street shit don't pay. Hey, majority of my page are civilians. You hear me? Like majority of them, a broke nigga ain't gonna buy shit no way. You know, so fuck I care about his opinion. You know, you ain't going to buy it anyway. You're going to try to bootleg my shit or wait till I drop it to to copy it, you know. But them real supporters, they going to support me. So that's why I look up to, bro. I don't, I don't worry about that. They going to make a million more stories, bro. You're going to see it all day down your timeline. Uh, Tristan News said this. You yeah, yeah. they going to say he ain't confirmed or denied. Yeah, you hear me like, you know. So I, it's it just always that, bro. I done got on the page a million times. I dropped two videos recently. Dropped two videos Saying the same shit and that. And, you know, people still going to say what, you know. I, but I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I don't give a fuck what nobody time about none of them. You hear me? Like, they don't feed me on some real shit. They don't feed me or none of that, you know. I feel that. This this my boy. This is my boy through the streets. He the only one that I knew off YouTube besides, like, the people from that neighborhood. So, like, everybody else, bro, I don't even worry about saying. Like, I don't know them personally. 
Like, I don't know you, so why would the fuck I care about what you talking about? You know, long as you don't approach me the wrong way, because I'm going to handle my business. Call me what you want on that thing. Call me what you want. Hey, but as long as you don't approach me with that shit on that thing, because I'm going to handle my business. You hear me? Like, for real. And that's, and that's just like with Sammy the Bull. He going to handle his business because he, cause he, you saying that, everybody been saying that for a whole bunch of times, right? Mm-hmm. You ain't seen a motherfucker try him, though, did you? <laughs> On that thing, bro. So I don't worry about it, bro. I'm going to live my life. My boy told me to live my life, run it up. For me and my family, you know, house with a pool. Nah, I been had that shit. You know what I'm talking about? Been, all you doing is say your shit. My analytics, like. All my money, if you getting if you getting ten and twelve and eight and eight and like shit like that, bro, every twenty eight days, who the fuck spending that shit? Like I pay my I pay what I gotta pay my mortgage, nah, my mortgage, and then the rest of that. If I make twelve and I only got a mortgage, you hear me? All I'm paying is bills. So you stacking it up? Hell yeah! Like why not? No, that's good to hear because a lot of people will make. Ten thousand in a month and making a mission to spend all the fucking money they just made. When in reality, if you kind of keep your expenses close to where they were at before, all of a sudden you could really stack a lot you of money. See it, bro. And yeah. then when you're ready to get on the road and be like, "Fuck it, we're going to Florida today, and we're mm-hmm. going to Texas tomorrow, and then California." Like when you it'll be able to do that type of shit. Like all this shit is achievable, man. And that's why I came on here today to say, man, size all the bullshit, man. All this shit is achievable, bro. You could do this shit through YouTube or the internet. Just find your glitch, bro. That's mm-hmm. all you got to do, man. Like, I might have to keep saying that. Find your yeah, glitch. Just find the your glitch, glitch man. <laughs> find sure. that motherfucker. But shout out my boy C Hood, man, because you know what I'm talking sure. about. Make sure y'all follow, they follow him, man. He an artist, too. Okay. And he he dope, man. Like, he got good music. He dope. And he know all the drill. Like, that I know the people. He know the same people. Cash, FBG Cash and them. All yeah. them like rest in peace. That's his brother in law. They got the same nephew. His his kids is cash is oh, uncle. Shit. Cash, yeah, yeah his yeah. kid's uncle. So cousins, first yeah, cousins. For sure. Uh-huh. All right. Hey, I appreciate the story. It's very inspirational shit. You know, I, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that, you know, if somebody from your background could make it on YouTube and be commanding as much attention and shit. I seen that Cam Capone interview at eight hundred K. I mean, that says a lot about how many people are fascinated by the shit you got to talk about. So, no, I, I, very I impressive. Need, I need them to get that book, Adam. I'm telling you, that's get like, the book. That's the best book. Literally, that's, do your homework. How, Write a book report. Yep. How I Survive Chicago Drill, man. By Trenches News. Let's go. Yep. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Remo, co-hosting. Check out my guys on YouTube. And we out. No Jumper. Coolest yeah. podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, Shout TikTok, no Jumper, man. Yo. Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support.